Well, okay, guys, we're going to transition over to do our discussion on Tier 8 ships for the upcoming clan battle season. This, of course, is being recorded on Twitch live right now. If you're here on Twitch, you can participate with us. This is interactive. We would love to have your comments as we're going through what we think might be some interesting ships that you could play or maybe some ships that you're going to be facing uh, when we get into this upcoming clan battle season. Uh, if you'd like to hang out with us on Twitch, you can come over and do it at twitch.tv slash Live. But without further ado, what do you say we get into this, which I call It's a Ship Show. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is our little segment we call Ship Show, and it's something we do whenever there's an event coming up that we think would be interesting to discuss with the community. Right now, the event that we're talking about is Clan Battles. I've got the rules for Clan Battles up on the screen here, um, and we'll kind of cover those briefly. When I say rules, I just mean kind of the settings or whatever. This is the 18th season of Clan Battles, and it's called Serenade. I googled that, and it is a salamander with two little arms up top, and that's it. So if you Google Serenade, you will see pictures of weird axolotl looking salamanders. Uh, that is the name of this season. In this season, we're going to have a 6v6 competition. So just six ships on a side with tier eight ships. Only one battle uh, battleship is permitted per team with no CVs and no submarines. Uh, I did confirm with uh, Wargaming about that because the article technically only says no CVs, but there is also, of course, no submarines because they're considered test ships. Each team is permitted a maximum of three mercenaries, and the maps there are listed. Ring, New Dawn, Islands of Ice, Trident, Loop, Haven, Crash Zone, or, excuse me, and Crash Zone Alpha. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll switch. I'll put those islands on rotation here, or those maps, I should say, on rotation. We can kind of talk about those uh, or anything else. So, Scott, when, when you think about a Tier 8 clan battle season, we haven't really rehearsed this or anything, but when you think about a Tier 8 clan battle season, obviously we see a lot of Tier 10 action there. Um, what is interesting to you about a tier eight season versus what we normally have tier 10? Um, you know, I, I like the variety. Uh, my first clan battle season when I started playing World of Warships with you guys was um, was eights. Uh, so it's been a long time since uh, we had a season of clans that was eights. Uh, so I, I think it's pretty cool that uh, we're back there. There's a lot of variety. There's a lot of crazy ships at tier eight. It's that tier where where you really start to hit the, you know, World War II levels of hardware, uh, really fully stuff that was built like in the late 30s or right before the war in a lot of cases or stuff that's been modernized in the game. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, that that's one, one reason uh, that I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, that historical aspect is pretty slick. You're right about the, the time period and stuff. Uh, so I think that's pretty neat. Obviously, there's an incredible number of um tier 8 premium ships as well as a robust tech tree as well um so you know there's just a ton of ships that are available at tier 8 for this kind of competition and one thing that i think is kind of a negative that i think is worth discussing is the fact that uh and we've talked about this multiple times there are no coal ships at tier 8 there are no steel ships at tier 8 right so the the eights that we have to choose from are basically tech tree ships or ships that cost money uh, luckily tier 8 ships are not you know, $150 or anything. They're reasonable, but there are going to be players out there who, you know, with a little bit less access to funds who might be looking at tech tree alternatives. So, you know, as we're going through today's discussion, we'll want to make sure that we cover those. Um, I was kind of thinking we'd start off like we often do. Uh, normally we start at destroyers and work our way towards battleships, but I think maybe this season um, we'll start with battleships and go the opposite direction. Uh, I've got kind of a list of ships that I've planned over here, and I think you've mm -hmm. put together uh, a few ships as well. Um, I think maybe we'll go through and just throw out our, our picks maybe one at a time, bouncing back and forth to make it a little interesting that way. Um, yeah, so let me throw, let me transition over. We'll go to battleships here real quick. Uh, guys at home, uh, guys and gals, folks, people of all ages and such, um, feel free to hit us up in the comments with anything that you guys think um, think of in terms of questions or suggestions, we'd be happy to try to respond as many of those as we can. And we might not see all your questions. So if that's the case, uh, you know, if you feel like you're being ignored, uh, highlight your question or something, we'll try to get to it. Um, Scott, why don't you start? What's your first battle? Well, actually, we've got the list here. Do we want to say anything about the list before we get into your first pick? Uh, this is a list at Tier 8 where there are good tech tree and good premium ships. And there are what I would consider less uh, useful for competitive uh, tech tree and less useful for competitive uh, 
premium ships. You're thinking across the board, they're less useful, like the, both the tech trees and the premiums. I think I think there's either or, right? I, I mean, like I don't want to say there's bad tech tree choices. I, I would just say there <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah. You know, I think I think there are ships that make more sense for competitive, and there's some that don't on both of those lists. Oh, I, I see. I, I misunderstood your comment there. I thought yeah, you were like this. It, both of these lists suck, and I was like, oh, that's not true, no, is it? <laughs> no, no. There's a lot of great <laughs> ships on this list, and there's yeah. a lot of great. There's a lot of ships though that I like on these lists that I don't think would be good in competitive as well. Yeah, I think that's definitely a true statement. You know, when I, I'll be honest, when I was looking at these ships, uh, normally what Scott and I do is we try to pick three battleships, three cruisers, and three destroyers, right? I chose more than three in every list, but I found battleship kind of be, to be a difficult section to pick ships in. Certainly there are more cruisers um, available at this tier, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, but this the destroyer counts not too far off, but I looked at these and I thought, the ones I'd want to take in there, I'd want to go with me. It's not a super long list. Um, why don't you hit us with your first one and we'll kind of talk about some of its uh, virtues and otherwise and and we'll keep I, I mean there. I, I you know I didn't we didn't I didn't at least sit down and make like a top three but I I would mm. speak to you know things that I like at this tier I I would say one thing I think that's interesting about when you touched on the on the rules for the season um the whole 6v6 one battleship thing right so we're starting with that battleship conversation and you can only yeah. have one so so what is your what is your hallmark then for your team, for your clan? What does your battleship need to do? I would contend that in competitive, usually if you have two battleships, you can kind of have some variety. You might have a flanker or you might have uh, more of a sniper and a brawler. But if you only have one, what do you want that battleship to do? So from from my point of view, I think the battleship needs to be uh, very survivable, and so that probably um, that 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 puts the 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 bloom on how I looked at this list, right? And so, like right off the bat, for me, one of my favorite tier eight battleships is Massachusetts. I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's a bizarre uh, thing to bring up, right? No, um, and and thing. again, Massachusetts. You know, we 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 look at Massachusetts, and Massachusetts has that that fast. Uh, fast returning heal the slow refractory period on that heal right so your heal comes back relatively quickly and it's relatively effective and so if you're the only battleship and you're in a situation where you're just where you're just tanking a lot i think having that kind of heal could help with that massachusetts isn't a bad ship either right the guns are fine they're not as they're not supremely accurate they're not as accurate as it's uh as it's stable made alabama or north carolina for that matter but its guns work really well in the ranges that you're probably going to encounter in clans and then, and then, as most folks know, you can build Massachusetts into secondaries, and um, you know that can be helpful as well for that additional firepower. So, for me, I think if I was playing um, Battleship, Massachusetts would definitely be one of my top choices. Yeah, I think um, Massachusetts makes a makes a lot of sense for the reasons you mentioned, right? And health pool wise, you know, looking at the other tier eights, uh, it's kind of on the upper middle, right? It's it's ninth out of 25 tier eight battleships on the list. I'm looking at the ship tool.st list of tier eight battleships, premiums and, and tech trees. So, you know, it's on the upper half there. So it's got that survivability. Plus as, as we talked and you certainly, um, you know, as mentioned briefly, the, the whole repair capability on Massachusetts, I think you mentioned it, um, is pretty solid, right? It's got a reasonable heal and it recharges pretty quickly. It's a 40 second recharge instead of the standard 80 or the 60 second heal we find on, on Monarch. So there's only a couple of battleships that heal that quickly. I think we'll talk about uh, Descone as well, as well at some point on this list. Um, yeah, I, I don't think anybody would say Massachusetts is crazy, Scott. Where are you coming from with that? Just because I think it is a reliable ship. It is a good uh, piece of kit. The speed's reasonable. Concealment on it um, is, let's see how it compares. Um, it's a little bit on the uh, more visible side, right? So 19th out of 25 in terms of concealment, uh, although tied with 18th, so 18th out of 25. Um, you know, and that's another thing when you talk about what do you want that one battleship to do, you want it to survive. And there's a couple of ways to survive. One is to tank damage and heal it back. Uh, another, of course, is to to be able to drop out of vision. Uh, that does put a lot of pressure on your battleship if it's the only ship visible. We saw this in tier six clan battles uh, where everybody would smoke up because the smoke meadow was huge. And uh, then your battleship was spotted and often um, the only target for your enemies and they would just get flamed out. But I think Massachusetts, 
its heal and its tankiness can kind of, kind of help uh, help it kind of overcome its uh, spot ability, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, obviously, the guns on it are reliable. People talk about how it's less accurate than Alabama, as you pointed out too. Um, but I think its guns are accurate enough. Like you, you, I think you said at the the ranges you're going to be facing in clan battles, right? Um, it's not inaccurate. It's just not as accurate as some of these other boats. I mean, I think it's reasonable enough there. Um, and of course, captain selection, right? Like you've, you're going to have a, a high quality captain that you can run on on that because America is a line that a lot of people have played. A lot of people have multiple captains on there. So even if you're not a USBB player, you might be a US cruiser player. You've got a captain you could bring over um, and assign to Massachusetts. Yeah, and, and, and if you're used to a tier 10 clan battles and you play Ohio or something like that, you can use like an Ohio captain and probably translates. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I think I use my Ohio captain on on Massachusetts and Georgia. I don't I don't think there's really anything I tweak between those. But like you said, you, yeah, again, being a premium, you can bring over a captain from somewhere else and have a build that makes sense for that ship. Mm-hmm. And, you know, captain builds, particularly for tier eight tech trees, that's something that's going to come up, right, as we talk about do you want to take a premium? Do you want to take a tech tree ship? Um, not everybody leaves a 20 point captain, a 21 point captain on a tier eight tech line ship. That's just not commonly done. I don't think mm-hmm. um, chat prove me wrong. You know, let me know if you disagree um, with that. But yeah, Massachusetts was also made my list. Um, I put it on there. I, I'm not I don't have an order, but like I think Massachusetts is definitely a worthwhile pick. Um, I did include I included the Lenin and Vladivostok pick. Now, I said Lennon, if you've got it, if you don't, Vlad, I think makes a, a, a lot of sense as well. Um, I think it, it, there's no secret that um, Vladivostok as at uh, tier eight in the tech tree, really tanky ship, excellent guns. As you mentioned, again, the, the ranges you're gonna be facing in a lot of clan battles are a little shorter than, you know, a 20 kilometer sniping match that you'd see in a random battle. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I think Vladivostok makes a lot of sense there. It, it's uh, rapid DCP, right? It's got limited uh, damage control party uses, but you can always be healing if you feel like you're in a, uh, if you're in trouble there. Um, Balmer ATL says, with only one B, uh, what's the cruiser to DD ratio? Balmer, we're gonna, we, we're gonna get to that. I think uh, once we're kind of done talking battleships, we'll cover that. I think that's a really interesting part of the discussion though. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think Lennon's a pretty strong ship. That's why it's not available in the game anymore. But you know the the one thing I when I look at Lennon and Vladivostok is the the disparity in hit points there. Where Vladivostok has like ten thousand more base HP, um, so yeah, that Lennon. that can yeah, yeah yeah Lennon's really re, Lennon's pretty far down the uh, the list of of tier eight battleship hit points. That's kind of its thing. Um, you know it's it's powerful um, and it has that interesting layout with all the turrets forward. Uh, but it, but that part you 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 might miss those hit points right in in this situation if you're a lone a lone tanker, um I and in and, and that's one thing you know we talked about you know you're looking at 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 Vladivostok having more hit points you know both ships are going to have the the um the limited damage control party you know Russian gimmick in that re- regard both of them have the same heal which is like a fourteen percent repair that can only repeal re- repair ten percent of your citadel. So, so they're very similar in that regard. Um, you know, I think you know both yeah. have nine barrels of 406. They have the they have identical um, AP DPM and HE HE DPM. Um, very similar in that regard. It's just what you're what you're looking at there is um, I can put my Kremlin captain who's Kuznetsov. Mm-hmm. Easier, more easily on the Lenin. Not that Kuznetsov super heal saves you because it doesn't work in clan battles. Um, but I can right. put. I, I I don't have personally. I don't have an 18, 19 point captain hanging out on Vladivostok. Now, eh, would I pay to re- if I was really bla- battleship captaining for this whole season and I was going to play Vladivostok? I would probably move a guy there for the season and just pay the penalty. Um, yeah, and and you know do that if I want to play Vladivostok because I think those ten thousand hit points, um, you know really help it. Um, but we both we both like Lenin quite a bit, and I don't think Lenin's bad if you were going to go use that instead. That's just probably the one caveat about it that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, agreed. And you know it's it's funny because like you you just said I don't have an eighteen nineteen point captain on my Vladivostok. You know, I, I recommend Vladivostok for this really easily. I think because it's commonly considered a popular ship. But also, 
I have a 19 point captain sitting on Vladivostok because when I got there, I said, you know what, I'm going to get that uh, Kuznetsov guy. And so I left my top tier captain on Vlad mm-hmm. and I moved on with Kuz into Soyuz and eventually Kremlin. And so mm-hmm. I, I'm in a weird situation where I actually do have that scenario, although I don't think I'll be the guy playing Battleship for our clan. Um, I, you know, I, I just love that ship so much because of how durable it was. You talked a little bit about its hit points and I'll I'll point out, you know, we'll kind of compare it a little bit with Massachusetts. Lenin is 63,000, I think, hit points. Uh, Massachusetts mm-hmm. comes 66k and change, obviously, and then Vladivostok is 73. So you, you mentioned 10,000 more, but that's also more than we see in Massachusetts. And Massachusetts's mm-hmm. heel is probably I'd have to compare yeah. here. Massachusetts uh, has the heel, right? So the yeah, fact that its heel it's comes back so every 40 great. seconds is it's going to make is, up that hit is point what makes gap. it different. Now right. I don't believe Massachusetts heel is as strong as North Carolina's heel because North Carolina has that buffed U.S. battleship heel that came along later. Um, I think North Carolina has that along with, you know, like the one that Iowa. Yeah, it does. It's got an 18.5% uh, hit point yeah. heal to Massachusetts 14. Right. And so it's just what, what I'm talking, when we're talking about that on Massachusetts, it's purely the fact that the heal comes back so fast. It's that reload. It's the, the cool down yeah. period that we're, yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, definitely, uh, North Carolina is actually an interesting pick. I did not put North Carolina on my list, um, but boy, is it a, just a good all rounder battleship. It is just very reliable. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I don't think if, if you took North Carolina, I could see somebody who's got a land and being like, boy, it's cool. It's too bad. You don't have my cool ship. And then like, you know, feeling a little spicy or a little sassy about you having a North Carolina, but. North Carolina is not an unreliable ship in terms of that. And I think there are a lot of players, you know, people who would be comfortable in Montana, people who might be comfortable even in Ohio. I know Ohio is a big gun ship and North Carolina is not, but um, players familiar with that style and that armor profile would be really comfortable in a North Carolina. Um, I don't know that I think it's like a top shelf recommendation, but if you're good in it, if you're comfortable in it, and that's something we talk about every time we do one of these, which is, you know, play a ship you're comfortable in, you're going to be better off playing a ship that you're good at, you're comfortable in than something that's fully in the meta, uh, almost certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you look at that list of tech tree battleships, um, I think Vladivostok stands out. I think North Carolina is very good. Mm -hmm. Um, um, You know, Monarch doesn't do anything for me because it doesn't have the it did monarchs not to the point in that line where you get the zombie heal um hawk yeah. doesn't have very thick armor i like hawk um but it doesn't have very thick armor uh but it does have a lot of hit points um and it has some other gimmicks but uh, not a lot of people probably have hawk you, you would have had to have uh you would have had to wail into the 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 event you couldn't just yeah. generically earn enough of those tokens to get to hawk right um, right you know amagi again like an old school kind of standardy battleship amagi moves around pretty well and uh, you know it's not horrible it has a lot of guns i know there's a lot of people that like amagi amagi's um, got the uh the largest largest guns largest it's got the largest guns uh at the tier two they're four tens and it has a lot of them like Amagi has, there's some reasons to think about that boat. I don't think it's the tankiest ship in the lineup, um, yeah. but its armament yeah, is not bad. Yeah, Amagi and Key share those guns at the at the tier, and, right? Uh, right. And they're and they're and they are, but you know, really, the difference between 410 and 406 is yeah. is not a right. So that's, I wouldn't take it just because I thought that was going to do anything for me. But I do think that, that I don't, I do think you will see Amagi. I really think across this list of battleships, you'll see. I don't, I, I could almost talk more easily about the ships I don't think we'll see, mm-hmm. um, because I think you're going to see, uh, uh, you know, a fair number of these ships in different compositions based on how people want to play and what they think the 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 advantages are. Right. Another another ship that that I had highlighted at least on my list of of wonky premiums was Flounder. Um, I like Flounder. It has the largest hit point pool at the tier. Um, but Flander pays for that by having less heals. I think without um, the heal skill, the four-point skill that gives you an extra heal, I think Flander only has like two heals coming out of the gate now. Uh, it, shows, um, th- it shows three on ST. Okay. Um, it, it, it could I'll be three. In, I, I know it has course. less. It has like less than everybody else because yeah. that was part of its balancing when they released it. Um, but Flander is kind of like that pocket all says that they created at Tier 8. Um, has a gob of like, you know, small caliber French secondaries. I wouldn't really recommend building into secondaries on it. Um, has, you know, 
smaller guns. It has like you know French three three eighties, but they they uh, work. Um, they have such high velocity and they they hit pretty hard, right? So I think yeah. Flanders kind of interesting. I don't know that you'll see a lot of Flanders because I don't know that a lot of people own Flander. Um, but I, I think yeah. I don't. I, I like that Flander has such a large hit point pool. Um, it, it is kind of problematic in its armor profile, though. I'm pretty sure, much like Alsace and and Borgonia, it's it's wrapped in 32 millimeters. So um, that that is less appealing to it. When you look at something like Vladivostok that has that like icebreaker uh, strap on the front, mm-hmm. um, you look at some of these other ships that might have stronger bow armor. Um, then that that might, you know, that might make it less uh, less appealing. But I do like the hit point pool on it. Yeah, I just don't want hit point uh, pool to be my deciding factor. But you know what I mean? Like I like no, that it yeah. has a lot of hit points. I did look at the list and I sorted it by hit points and I said, okay, you know, who's got all the hit points? And you know, and Flunder showed up in that list. Um, I did look at it and I was I did note the heal count. I did just double check by the way. It is three charges on mine without a captain or whatever. Um, but and it heals um, at least in my configuration again. Sans captain, three hundred seventy-seven hit points a second, which is uh, reasonable. You know, I don't think that's the best number you're going to see. I think we looked at one that had um, Vanguard had four thirty. We just looked at that in that game that went so poorly for us. Um, but yeah, the armor profile is always a little bit alarming on some of those French battleships. I liked the idea of Flander. The other one I just learned the other day. I can't remember if it was from you or from somebody else. Um, Gascon has a 40 second reload on its heel as well. So Gascon uh, again has some of that French armor concern. It's two turrets of four barrels a piece, uh, but it does have the Massachusetts reload time on its heel, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the guns are a little bit smaller. I think they're 380s. Yeah, 380 millimeter guns. Um, so that's a thing that often I could see making people kind of recoil a little bit. We just saw how poorly I was shooting. Let's set that aside for a second. But, you know, Vanguard's 381s, I wasn't getting a lot of work done with. In a 6v6 clan battle with only one battleship on the other side, let me actually, let me pose this to you. What do you think about gun caliber? Do you think a 380 would be fine if the enemy only has one battleship? I mean, most of your targets are going to be smaller. In, or thin yeah. armor, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, it depends on who you're playing against, but I mean, uh, your your biggest caliber is going to be like, you know, four six or four tens, right? So pretty right. much you're going to face you're going to face that size guns, and if you, I do think that the thing that kills battleships, at least in the in the tiers that of clan battles that we play, probably is going to be less about battleships exchanging fire, and more about the mm. battleship either getting burnt down or torped out. Um, so I'm looking, then you're, then you're more concerned about, well, what's my deck armor thickness? Um, right. That's a good what's point. my ability. How, what's my superstructure size? What's my ability to, to resist, uh, getting just thrashed in, in getting fires. What's, what's the maneuverability of the ship? If I need to dodge torps, um, can I, can I slip in and out? Can I move? Can I get to, can I get, can I get the ship out of its own way? Um, those kind of things. Right. And so, um, that, that's kind of I, I just don't, I don't know you know I don't think at tier eight worrying about unless you're going down to like uh, Odin or Brandenburg where you've got like 300 uh, millimeter yeah, size guns 305s and only 50,000 right? hit points or something right? yeah and let, and let, yeah those are both like Odin has like 50,000 hit points Brandenburg's not much better Brandenburg's kind of an interesting ship where it uses the Turpitz Bismarck hull but it has a far smaller hit point pool yeah. um um, and, and those smaller guns. Now, that said, if the primary target, you know, if you're fighting teams that have three cruisers all the time, then 300s are just fine. Right. You're less likely. You're less likely to get a bunch of overmatches, in my opinion. So, there's there's that uh, there's that as well. But you're not as likely to to you know smash through the bow and over you know get that um, you those know get the over get that overmatch, that overmatch. right? Because yeah, you know, what are you going to overmatch with like? You're with like the 406s or whatever, you should be able to overmatch what a 25 millimeter bow. Is that right? Uh, divided by 14 point something is the magic number. Which ones were you looking at? 380s? 406s. 406. I don't think a, I don't think a 15 inch gun can overmatch that, which is a 380. Yeah, but it's like a 28 millimeter gun. pen plus or minus a millimeter. Oh. I, you know, I did 14.5. I think it's actually 14.35 or something, but Roger. Um, but yeah, so about 28 millimeters of overmatch. Um, but that's yeah, actually so, listed in here. We could just look it up. 
So when you're when I you know I. I, it's going down to the 300s that that might be the only concern with those the ship there's like what two ships maybe at this tier that have those everything else has either got 15 or 16 inch guns yeah exactly and and i kind of wonder about that you know your comment about battleships battleships are gonna have to worry about their own survivability right we've as soon as this was announced everyone talked about the three galloping kiev med, uh, meta that we expect to see certainly in the higher leagues of play right now you know, one thing that we always like to make clear, and we probably should have started with this off, is that, you know, Scott and I, we play in a very casual clan of very average players. And we usually play one clan night, one clan battle night a week, and we get up to about Storm League, right? That's pretty normal for us. So if you guys are Hurricane players in here, first of all, welcome. And we'd love to have your perspective and stuff in chat and, and your, your comments. But, you know, one thing that we know we saw in that last tier eight clan battle season at those higher leagues of play was like three Kievs and a Fantasque or whatever, running around and burning everybody to death. Um, because that was the the top tier meta, the Hurricane, the Typhoon, the Nebula League meta. And, um, you know, at our, at our league, we're gonna see different compositions of ships. Um, but that Battleship being the most spotted ship on your team, I think Battleship is gonna be a really difficult role to play this season at Clan Battles. Um, and that maybe is another vote for you to look at a ship that you're really comfortable in if you're your clan's Battleship player, um, if that's kind of where you're gonna spend your time, um, you know, find something that you can handle. And, you know, concealment is another factor, you know, when you talk about that. Can you go dark? Can you find your way into a place um, where you can be safe or where you can recover, where you can wait for your heal to come back? Um, and, you know, we looked at the, the maps briefly. We can certainly talk about those again if that becomes of interest. But, um, you know, are there going to be places to hide? I think that's probably a discussion for another day. But mm -hmm. Yeah, any other, any of anywhere else on this list that you're thinking, what, like what other, what other ships interest you? Yeah, 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 that's a good one. You know, one of the ones you and I joked about a little bit was either a Borodino or a Constellation pick. I put them on my list with a question mark. Um, these are two battleships that come with radar, and with only six ships, you know, is it is it going to be valuable to do some dual purposing? I, Borodino has four oh sixes. I don't remember how big the guns on Connie are, uh, but I Constellation think Constellation has. Constellation has Colorado guns, so they're 406s, oh, okay. but they're but they're, they're tier seven. Tier. They're not they're not NorCal guns. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, they do just fine at tier eight. I mean, they they're fine, but they're not quite the same, right? Right. So the 406 is uh, they're going to be a little slower than Borodino, 768 meters per second. Um, yeah. Flight time is 5.9 seconds at 12 kilometers for Borodino, 6.7 for Constellation. So that's a pretty hefty distance at, or difference at only 12 kilometers. So Borodino is going to be a little quicker. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, those Borodino, are both interesting picks. Yeah, Bor take it away. Borodino's got six guns forward that have a long reload, though. Borodino's reload's over 30 seconds. Yes. And Constellation's, Constellation's got eight guns and its reload's a little bit more normal. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, Borodino's probably... A lot tankier than, uh, um, yeah. than than Constellation because Constellation and, and I see you know comments in chat about holding board you know back by its armor. I agree, its armor's not epic. Um, I don't think Constellation has mm -hmm. that great of armor either. Constellation's such a weird hull; it's so high in the water, very um, tall, very easy to hit, very easy to. But burn, Con probably. Constellation's maneuverable, and Constellation also has like Fletcher torps and radar. It's got like silly gimmicks on it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that we'll see Constellations, but you know that we talked about. I you know we I don't know probably wait until we're done and then I'll talk about my uh, we'll my crazy ready. my crazy lineup that I want to try. <laughs> yeah, we uh, should that definitely involves, talk about that involves that. those ships. I think I think other ships though that are on 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 the list that I that I would consider. Um, geez, I probably just consider anything that your your cap is comfortable in. You just played it. Um, I don't think Vanguard's an absolutely horrible choice. Vanguard has a slightly better heal than mm -hmm. uh, your average bear. Um, it, it has like a 16 and a half percent heal versus like a 14 percent heal and 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 Vanguard's got um, Vanguard's got pretty good AP um, so I don't I don't think Vanguard's an absolutely horrible choice either also Vanguard's got a pretty shifty rudder I um, wanted to pop yeah that, that pretty was good for for Sorry, dancing okay. with if you need to dodge torpedoes or something yeah, I was going to bring up Vanguard as well, even though I played it really poorly. Um, Vanguard is the third most hit point, the third the third highest hit points rating in at tier eight across premiums and tech tree. The other thing it has is a 25 second main battery reload, which 
in a match where you're going to have to defend yourself against possibly three galloping Kievs. Um, and maybe we're spoiling the destroyer discussion a little bit there, but uh, having a faster reload is not going to hurt you. The 381s, if we're right about not having to worry, and it, like you said, it depends on who you're fighting, but you know, the 381s might not hurt you if you're only fighting one battleship and if your smaller ships are dealing with that battleship so you can focus on cruisers and things like that. Um, it's AP pens better than I demonstrated too. I, I haven't played that ship very much and that's one of the reasons I wanted to try it today. I was like, let's see how Vanguard plays. Maybe we'll talk about it later. Um, but uh, it was definitely one I wanted to sort of ch chat about a little bit. Its heal is really strong. We saw it was over 400 hit points per second. And it's relatively stealthy, I think. Is it stealthy? Um, I haven't played it in a while, so no, you, I'll, you, I'll you check tell me. Here. It's 10th out of 25, so um, not the stealthiest, but not bad. It's mid-pack, so not particularly stealthy. 15.6 um, before you put things on it to bring it down, captains and modules and things. But um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I thought that was a worthwhile ship to kind of throw into the mix even though i think most people kind of deride vanguard I, re realistically do i think you're going to see a bordino a constellation or a vanguard probably not i think what we're really in for is a lot of massachusetts and vladivostok based, based clans um i was wondering about hawk and you kind of addressed that one already um if you thought anybody would bring that one uh you know it it's got a few weaknesses. It's got some strengths. Its torpedoes are, I think, only eight kilometers. But there's only, is it just the two ships that have torpedoes? If we're looking for weird gimmicky. Oh, no, there's a few. I forgot Odin. Constellation has torps. Uh, Key has torps. Turpitz has torps. Zeton has torps. Odin has torps. What do you think about Zeton in a competitive capacity? It's probably the least favorite of those <laughs> top tier Zeton. German Brel yeah. Zeton's like the my least favorite out of that whole line. Like, <laughs> like, like at least like I just don't like the layout, and I haven't played. I I honestly like I I didn't play it a whole lot when it, when it, when we went through that line. So, um, it does have really aggressive torp angles. I'll give it that, and it has this the secondary gimmick. But I I think, um, I think you you'd almost be you'd almost be better off leaning back into like Turpitz or Bismarck as opposed just because of the durability. Uh, yeah, I was thinking yeah, Bismarck yeah. too. If yeah. if I was picking from those three for the acoustics, right? I mean, yes, yep. you're giving up the tor the torps from Turp, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's the nice thing about Zeton and Bismarck is, is the acoustics. Mm -hmm. That's the, you know, if you're looking at the Germans, that's a downside of Brandenburg and Turpitz is they don't have them, right? So, um, yeah. you know, and that's nice to have. Um, it's just nice to have helps you know survivability and, and we both like Odin quite a bit, but Odin just has so few hit points. So I just don't think Odin. Yeah. Give me another 15k, and I think we could talk about it. But we got a few comments in chat here too. We've got uh, uh, Rob Robinson Sniper says Constellation has a big fire chance. Yes, I think it could be very burnable. Um, Meat Pie Man says Connie can get about. Uh, I'm not sure what its speed is, but we can find out. Uh, General Constellation. Yeah, it's the thir it's 33, 33 knots or so. Yeah, not fastest. too shab. Yeah. Um, we had another comment in here I wanted to catch, which was Fish Stick said, any giving uh, any side angle and Hawk just explodes, right? So um, definitely true. Uh, Meat Pie Man mentions that Brandy has torques. I think we're talking Brandenburg there. Uh, true. Uh, Brandenburg does not have the acoustics, though. So kind of depends on what you, if you're going to be a little more aggressive or a little more defensive with your with your one battleship and you know thinking about the single battleship meta it for me i think i value the acoustics more than the torpedoes i think i need that ship to stay alive the, it's going to be a survivability game for that battleship because there's going to be so much focus on that player i think it's going to be a really stressful battleship season and it's going to be a heck of a lot easier for destroyers this season but maybe maybe i'll be proven wrong i don't know yeah, uh, I'd be curious to see how that goes down, and I'm I'm not sure how that'll play out when we go and and uh, you know a lot of this too just depends on your clan and your battleship player who's gonna For follow sure. who's gonna play that role and what they're comfortable with because you can t you could talk a big game you know I think a lot of clans fall into the trap of well we have to play the meta, right. um, but but if you're not any good in the meta ships then what's the point you'd be better off. You're better off playing ships that you're comfortable in and just throwing the dice. Uh, if, if you're super worried about playing the meta ships, um, 
you know, it, 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 if you're, you know, if it's obviously like if you're, you know, you're a clan that's, you know, going to be worried about playing the meta because you're playing all the clans who are playing the meta, mm. uh, then, Come then the again, like we talked together, about, you're watching this show. But, um, <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, if you're just you like, here, if you're like a duff or, yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah. if you're just like a duffer or if you like enjoy playing and it's more of a casual thing or yeah. you just, you want to go play competitively because it's a fun way to play, but, but you're not like hell bent on on following the meta. Sometimes, sometimes getting stuck in that trap where ever, you're making everybody play in the meta. If they're not comfortable in those ships, there's just no value in that. Uh, Thomas, thanks for the sub, man. Appreciate you. That's 14 months for Tom. 14 months for you too, Scott. That's insane. I, the idea that we're doing this for 14 months is ridiculous. Yeah, I know, I right? Appreciate y'all. Crazy. Um, we had a comment earlier. Uh... <laughs> We had a comment earlier. Sorry, I had just another one rolled in there. Um, Fish Stick says, Monarch over the Hawk, super heal, and Furious is strong. Um, Monarch does not have a super heal, but it does reload faster. So it's a 60 second reload instead of the, the 80 second that we have on most battleships. Um, it's a better heal. It's a better heal. It's like a 16.8 heal. Yeah. heal. 16. It's, 8, all, yeah. the, all the British ships at this tier have a better heal it's like improved um, but you know i guess yeah, maybe it's I'm not the, it's not here. it's not the really it's not what you have on like conqueror it's not the double right it's not the two uh cross heal because uh, the icon, conquerors right? is like 40 percent, and it does it in 20 seconds instead yeah. of 16.8 over 28 seconds mm -hmm. right so it's just the difference is mega that said you know monarch's heal is not terrible i really had a hard time making anything happen with monarch uh, Monarch actually, I think, has the highest AP DPM in the tier, but it's just hard to use it. Um, let me double check that to make sure I'm not a liar. Uh, main battery. Does it, AP does it still? It says, um, yep, Monarch, it's top. Monarch does as far as ships that are released. Yeah, that's yeah. true. We'll see if uh, anything comes out to change that for us. But uh, um, so, yeah, we've got Monarch in that top slot. But again, you know, feasibly, it's sort of like Nuremberg, which has a really high AP DPM. That's hard to use, you know, and I think it's the same case with Monarch. Um, mm. But I mean, Fishstick's not wrong though, that uh, Monarch might be, for, for folks who are comfortable with it, uh, a better ship than Hawk, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, the thing and, you know, Mon Monarch yeah. gets there because Monarch and Hawk both have short fuse, right? So, right. So Monarch, the the difference there with Hawk is that Hawk has four hundred sixes and and not the three eighty ones that Monarch has. Like, like I can't I can't really talk about Hawk because I don't have it in port. Right, um, right, right. But I could talk about Rook, which I do have and is very similar tier lower. And if you go look at the stats for Hawk, I I I really like Rook. I think it is a pretty good ship. The yeah. the the British battle cruiser line I think is pretty good. It doesn't have giant thick heavy armor. Right. Um, if I had a hawk and I was playing and I was asked to play battleship, I might try it. I might try it for this season uh, I, because I know I like how Rook plays. Uh, but, yeah. But I but that's just me. Right. Um, Thomas rolls in. He says, "Sorry, I'm late." And then he says some other stuff. But then he goes, "Lennon is the most OP." Yeah, we we covered Lennon. We agree. Um, of course, its lack of availability is going to be tough for I think some players. Um, but uh, you know, and obviously for folks who don't have a Lennon, and we talked about the health, health advantage Vlad of Vostok has. Yeah, so I yeah I really do think we're going to see a lot of lads, a lot of Massachusettses. Um, I don't think we'll really see, you know, some of these wackier boats like we talked. But uh, let me go back to the filter here. Um, yeah. Or Thomas ahead. in chat says, can we say that North Carolina has the most accurate guns? North Carolina has a 2.0 Sigma. North Carolina does not have the best vertical dispersion at tier and does not have the best horizontal dispersion at tier. So no, yeah. I can't say it has the most accurate guns. <laughs> North Carolina <laughs> comes in ninth place out of 25 yeah. for that vertical dispersion, right? It's tied yeah. with Vanguard and Kansas. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's decent. 2.0 Sigma is going to be fine. And I think anybody who is a bit of a sniper shooter would be just fine with North Carolina. I think they'd be perfectly happy. We talked about that boat being pretty reliable. And I think it just is. I wanted to ask you a little bit about what do you think about key? It's, uh, a, it's well, a premium. It's I, a, you know, I like key, but keys downside compared to a Moggy is you trade armor thickness for the torpedoes. And I always um, feel like a Magi could use a little more armor anyway. So maybe Right. It's... And that's kind of where key is downside is. Otherwise, it's basically, I mean, they're the same guns with the same amount of guns. It, uh, the key has, you know, 10 kilometer torpedoes that are fun. And it has, um, uh, 
its secondaries aren't accurate, but it has Akazuki turrets, right? It has the 100 millimeter dual purpose IJN guns for secondaries, um, which are probably more useful than secondaries on, say, Amagi, if yeah. you were to build it that way, but you should, probably shouldn't. Um, but but you're tr basically what you're doing with key is you're trading some armor thickness for those torpedoes. So um, I I personally like key as you saw earlier. Um, you had a good we game in it. Unfortunately, had, we didn't know, win. But <laughs> four kills and was chasing a, a fifth kill. I just didn't have any vision and yeah. Um, it, it's a, I I I've, I've always found key to be an agreeable ship to me and I'm not a huge IJN stan. I don't really like ja uh, Japanese battleships actually. Uh, but if I look at my like personal statistics that like for like um, you know tier eight battleships, um, I think key well barring like what went on tonight, key is like my highest like PR tier eight battleship. How oh, is it? Um, and it's uh, like my second highest average damage. It's actually probably my highest average damage legitimately as far as uh, tier eight battleships that I have on my port go, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I don't have a lot of games in it. Um, I only have like eight or nine matches in it but um uh it works well for me uh i wouldn't have any problem like if you guys in our clan if you said we got to play battleship i wouldn't have any problem playing key i could use key it'd yeah, be fine yeah i want to think i want to throw out a couple of interesting ships we haven't talked about yet i don't know that i think these are fully competitive ships um uh, i want to talk about atlantico and roma roma is very tanky um, but it doesn't have the sap trick that the rest of the Italian line has. And after that, it's just not particularly special in any way. I like Roma. I think Roma is reasonably reliable, but I don't know if it really has a place in competitive. Um, I just think it's a fun ship, but I, I worry that it wouldn't be able to do the right things in, in competitive. And then Atlantico is one of the stealthiest ships that we have in the list. Um, in terms of uh, detectability by sea. It's actually second on the list after Monarch, and Roma is third. So these are both relatively low concealment ships um, in terms of you know being competitive against other battleships. What do you think about Atlantico? What do you think about Roma? Um, I, I've played Roma previously in like ranked. Um, mm -hmm. And Rome in that it's very tough, right? Roma is very tough, and I don't dislike the guns. The guns are kind of shotgunny. Um, it's nice though bit. on That's Roma. True. Yeah, I always thought it was nice on Roma that I had HE because sometimes when you couldn't, because it has smaller guns, so like sometimes if you couldn't overmatch things, you could at least ride the HE. Yeah, I actually do think that you're going to see Viterio Veneto, um, which you know is a is the same hull as Roma, so it's still very tough, but it has sap and it, it has, has the smoke. fuel and yeah. has the fuel smoke, right? And so I think you'll see Vittorio Veneto's. Um, and that's okay. Like, I think that's a, I think especially when there's only one battleship and you're fighting cruisers, the sap is so strong, um, yeah. where you don't have to worry as much about, you know, you're going to overpin and you can do these big slappy, big slappy hits with it. Um, you know, I think that's pretty good. Uh, Atlantico, I'm a huge fan of Atlantico. I really like that ship. Um, I don't mind that it's slow. I enjoy playing that ship. Um, I like its secondaries that are hy hysterically large. Mm -hmm. um and and accurate when when you build into them looks and like I love a little main, cartoon with its you know right just silly I, love its main, I love its main battery um because it's got like you know i think they're like 381 like british size 381 so you get like 10 barrels and the ap on it's all ap only but the ap works um it's it handles well enough because it's slow uh, and I love the concealment on it, that it's just so stealthy. It's a fun ship. I just don't know how it would do in um, in in, a, in the competitive setting. Yeah. I'd, love, yeah. I'd love to try almost every ship on this list, like be like, oh, I'm just going to play. I'm just going <laughs> to cycle through all these battleships and see what I like. Um, just because it's, I, I think having the, uh, the it, I think it's fun to have the, the tier eights again. And I just think there's a lot of interesting combinations you could have from this. Yeah, I do too. You know, I, uh, uh, DGW says, um, Foaming Jetty says boo to Veneto, and maybe he does, but, you know, I remember in tier six clan battles, we would see whatever the tier six one is, did something with a D. Um, Andrea Doria. Andrea Doria would show up, and that thing would t disassemble cruisers. Um, I don't think you'll see Veneto in every battle, but now that I've said that, you will. So 
I've always find a way to be wrong on these things, but but I think Veneto's, I mean, it's 97 millimeters of sap penetration and it's ricochet angles for the sap is between, it starts at 70 and it's guaranteed at 80. So you can hit people with 97 millimeters of pen from any angle and that sap can citadel the right targets at the right angles. So, you know, actually at right angles uh, would be the way to do that. But I mean, you know, I think Veneto could wind up showing up in more battles than people think. I don't think it's a particularly popular battleship, uh, but I think folks who are thinking about the anti-cruiser meta, you know, could be good. Now the sap interacts with destroyers poorly, if I'm remembering correctly. Is that right? It's damage capped, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think some folks might look at that and say, "Well, we expect a lot of DDs. We're not going to do a sap mm -hmm. ship," um, you know, and and. and so like looking at that 381s, you talked about the smaller caliber on Roma. I did want to mention those are 381s just for anybody who doesn't know. Um, and then Bowmaster asks an interesting question. He says, well, would he says, would concealment mean as much on these clan battle maps with the shorter, shorter ranges? He says on the tier eight maps, but you know, speaking of the shorter uh, engagements we expect, you know, it might not, uh, it kind of just depends on how closely you're playing. And if your plan is to extract yourself to heal, or if it's to take a more Massachusetts approach and just heal frequently because you can, I don't know if concealment's going to be big, but I do know that battleships are, are going to be. Well, I theorize at least the battleships are going to be under a lot of pressure. I've said that three times, I think, since we started. But um, so the concealment might not be as much. Scott, do you think you'd be able to escape from battle to to get concealed in a battleship, or do you think that's just not really realistic? Um, gosh, you know, I don't so know is an acceptable answer too. By the way, there's it, so many factors that say. come into play on that question: uh, map layout, what your team's positioning is, uh, what they're doing. I, I, you know, I might be able to get, you know, on, on like Hawk that's, that's got relatively low concealment or Monarch or, um, Atlantico, which has got supremely low concealment. I'm, I could, I'm sure I could get unspotted, especially early in the match. If I open, if, if I engage outside of my concealment, but inside my gun range, I'm probably going to be able to like let my guns go quiet and get hidden again because mm -hmm. the concealment's so good. Um, it just depends. And, you know, then it also, it's, you know, depend on the battleship player, not to just sit still on one spot, like be dynamic, use the islands, just like everybody else does to break line of sight, use your destroyers or, or your cruisers smoke to break line of sight, do stuff like that. And then don't open your guns up again in a position where all you're going to do is get targeted by four. Right. Right. Unless you need to get targeted by four because your DD is getting crushed or something like that. Yeah. Right. But you need to you know, take if that you, focus for a minute or something. Yeah. But I mean, even then, like nobody who's spotting a DD should stop shooting that DD to shoot that battleship at that point in time anyway. So right. I, I do think, I do think having, you know, low consumer, some of, some of my, some of the battleships I would play at this tier, uh, with the captain builds I would have, I probably wouldn't have concealment in the captain build though. Mm. Something like Massachusetts where I want the secondary build, I wouldn't have the points. Yeah, you'd you'd save those points, utilize them elsewhere. Yeah, I just you just wouldn't have the points if you want manual secondaries. You'd I'd 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 want fire prevention and I'd want um you know the extra heal. Uh so I wouldn't I wouldn't have uh I wouldn't have concealment on that build probably. There's some other situations probably on this list that look that way too. So we, I think we're coming to the part of the conversation and Hershey Hanks has kind of primed us for this in chat. He said, so what would you say is the worst choice? Maybe we won't say worst, but, you know, if you were to pick a ship or a few ships here that you think you just definitely won't see, Scott, what do you think those are going to be? This was a question I think you originated there's, the first time we did this. It's a great yeah, question. Yeah, there's some Chad that will play every ship on this list and be really good, right? <laughs> there's always that guy because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a game like that. I wouldn't expect to have success in champagne in in this setting that's the first uh, one that came to mind for me champagne too. has like really thin armor um it's yeah. made to sit on the eye line and snipe its guns are so accurate and and if you haven't if you haven't played champagne and you you probably haven't and if you haven't played against the <laughs> champagne well you probably haven't um but it, it's it's got it's basically like a tier eight republic uh the the way the turret layout is the guns are large uh for the tier though it's they're like 406s but the shells scoot um and the sigma and the horizontal dispersion it's like the most accurate battleship at the tier i think um and its base range is like 24 or something like that it shoots so far um or you can run a spotter on it it's it's really good but it not for this like 
Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it's really like 26. You, I think it's so it's long. It's insane. I, you know, but it, you know, you're just, it, it, it can't, it has like no armor. Uh, it, it just doesn't, it's not, even, even if you were running like a two battleship, if this was a 7v7 season, like using Champagne as the second battleship that was like a sniper still probably is not realistic. You'd have to be like a really giga chad with it or just like, you just, I don't know. So that's the one I don't expect to see. Uh, yeah. and I don't expect to see be successful that I easily can pick out off this list. I would definitely say Champagne for all the reasons you just said. You just gave a great characterization, I think, of why it's a good ship, but not good for clans. Um, I don't expect Kansas to be popular. I think somebody will try Kansas. Like you said, there will be some mega Chad who does each one of these ships and does it well. But um, mm-hmm. I don't think Kansas will be popular just because it's kind of an unpopular ship. Uh, it seems, at least, with uh, with the community. But I'll give you, a, I'll, get, bring I'll, give you I'll give you one and a half reasons why you'll see Kansas. Tell me all about it. I want to know. Because a guy is trying to get to Vermont and he's bending his clan to get base I, XP no. and flagging. Oh, he's not flagging <laughs> up. What's he Stop. doing? But but because on the tech, you're gonna see every one of these tech tree ships because there's some guy that that's so how he is it. on the tech tree, right? So he's using this as a XP sink. The half a reason you're gonna see Kansas is Kansas just like Vermont and and Minnesota got that that acceleration buff and it can actually get out of its own way relatively quickly now. Yeah. You can kind of do some fun things with those ships, but yeah, I yeah, I do think that you will totally see. Uh, if you play enough matches, I really think you'll see every tech tree ship for the one reason there, which is somebody's like, well, you know, I've been stuck at Amagi for three years. You guys mind if I play that? And I'm just going to put some economic bonuses or whatever we call those now. I just want to yeah. say flags, but you know what I mean? I think yeah. I think that's a thing people are going to do across the board on all, on all tech trees at everything. Yeah, I, I think you'll definitely see that. We see that in Ranked, right? Where obviously it's somebody who is just hate grinding that boat in ranked because they think they can do it faster there and stuff. We might see that happen in in clans as well. Um, If I were picking a third one that I think is going to be, we'll say at least less common, it'd probably be Monarch as well. Again, there's going to be somebody who's a Monarch fan who's going to run it and do a great job. But I I think those three ships were the three that kind of came to mind, which, you know, uh, that I just don't think we're going to see in large numbers. Probably you'll see Kansas the most of those three would be my prediction, but... You know, again, I, I've been wrong very many times in my life, and this could be another opportunity where I do just that. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything against Monarch except when I leveled through there. You remember the the march of the? I don't want to make light of things, so I don't want to use the term I would normally use to describe just how that I felt playing painful that. march through that ship. But, right. But the march through that ship to me, I have twenty six battles in Monarch, and I averaged just shy of eighty thousand damage in it, which is teal damage. Uh, and I had a 23% win rate. It took me forever, took me forever to get past Monarch because I could not buy a win. I could not buy a win in that <laughs> ship. I could not carry in that ship. Yeah. I had plenty of damage. I understand the concepts. I know how the ship works, but golly geez, I could not make that ship win. Um, so so Monarch I have has a special place in my heart uh, for being frustrating in that regard. Uh, but somebody will play it and do fine in it because somebody will, without question. somebody will play everything on here and do fine in it. Yeah, without question. I, I do think that there are players who are good at Monarch. And and in a, com- you know, as I sit here and ponder this, I'm kind of going, well, maybe. And I put my hands together like this. But like in a competitive setting where everyone is on voice with you and you're working together, the HE capabilities of Monarch could be utilized very well with your gang of, of HE spamming destroyers or cruisers or whatever. So, you know, maybe we could we could see somebody organizing a, a strategy, a plan to use Monarch um, in that way. Um, I, you know, I struggled through Monarch as well. I don't think my damage number was as good as yours, and I don't think my loss rate was as bad as yours. So I, I had a hard time with it as well. And so maybe, maybe you and I are soured against Monarch. But you know, those were randoms in clan battles. Maybe somebody could put it together and, and do something fantastic. Well, I don't think I have any other final thoughts on battleships. Um, did you get? It, did you have anything else that you wanted to drop? Or any other interesting questions maybe we could mull no, over before we I just said topic. in chat, I think we've talked about battleships for like an hour and there's like three times as many cruisers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, there will probably be a few things we can trim out of this for the YouTube 
Uh, yeah, first... Coming up soon, hour seven of the clan battle conversation, <laughs> 4 a.m. local time. Don't We're forget talking to, about uh, destroyers. Don't forget to get, uh, you know, go take your break, get a sandwich or something. Um, OK, well, let's go ahead and we'll roll over. Let's do cruisers next. Uh, so we'll work our way to this list. So as you just mentioned, an enormous list of cruisers, lots of premiums. I think it's 14 or 15 ships in each column, right? So if, if it's 14, that's 18 premiums. If it's 15, that's 19. And then a pretty good list of tech tree ships as well. We had somebody earlier before we started our discussion say, hey, what do you guys think of Talon? This is the time when we're going to talk about Talon. We're going to talk about some other ships as well. Um, looking at this list, uh, you know, we've got... I think we've got cruisers that kind of do different things. And one of the things I wanted to make sure I had at least one pick on here was a radar cruiser. Um, when you, when I'm looking at this list and thinking about radar cruisers, there were three that I picked here and I'm not sure which one I think is the best one. I think the one that is probably the meta ship is not the one I would be most comfortable in, but I think you're going to see a lot of Edinburgh's out there. I like Edinburgh. But I think if people want to run Radar Edinburgh, I would be supremely uncomfortable uh, trying to run Radar Edinburgh just because I know my limitations in that ship. I can do pretty good work in Smoke Edinburgh, but if my team's demanding that I bring Radar in that light cruiser, I think I'm going to have a harder time making it, you know, making hay with that thing. Um, thoughts about, well, I mean, if you have any general cruiser thoughts, I should have probably thrown the mic to you for that. I thought you were just going to throw to me thoughts about Radar Edinburgh. I was going to throw to you thoughts about Radar Edinburgh. We started in a strange locale. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, let's talk, yeah, no, do you have anything about cruisers first before we get into Edinburgh, if you want? Uh, I, things about cruisers. I think, I think when you, I, I think we think, hmm. at least in our clan, which is a small, casual clan, that our configuration is probably two destroyer, three cruiser, one battleship. Probably. I'm willing to entertain th a three destroyer option as well. But yes, yeah, I, I think yeah, that's sure, reasonable. Sure, sure. I think the meta is, is three DDs, right? At least probably, right? I think it's, some it's guys like, have been talking about four, but yes, probably, I think it's heavier. Yeah, on the there's a lot side. of people that don't like the cruiser complement available at eight and doesn't don't like what it brings. Mm -hmm. um, MIGs, our clan is called Rekt, uh, R E K T, um, which isn't uh, anything to write home about. It's just our little clan. <laughs> yep. um, so I, I, when I look at, when I think about if we're, if you're doing like a three cruiser comp, like I think we would try. Um, yeah. We're probably, are we still really pushing two radar cruisers? We're definitely pushing one radar cruiser. I can't imagine a scenario where we're like, yeah, we're only going to go with like one with no radar. Well, I my magic dream lineup involves no radar cruisers, but again, we'll talk about <laughs> we'll that later. We'll get to your magic dream lineup. But, I want to hear it. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I, if, if I was going to, if you're going to take like one cruiser, is it going to be radar Edinburgh with its, what, does it, it does have, it does have 10 kilometer radar. I, I, th I, I, I will know. find out for you. Hold no, it in. does. It does. It does. You know, the, the only ones that have short range radar at this tier are Belfast, Tiger, and, and uh, Wichita. Yeah. Um, 10 kilometers. Oh, and, yep. and Cleveland and Montpelier. Um, right. But, but uh, yeah, surprisingly, radar 10, 10. I don't know. I Radar Enberg is not a bad ship. And if you can make it work, that's dope. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do like Edinburgh. Um, I have Edinburgh. I, I would. Pro I have in my crazy lineup might involve a smoke Edinburgh, but I don't have a problem with that. I. I think as far as the radars go, though, I think, um, Congress, Talon, uh, yeah. and Edinburgh are probably the ones I would be most comfortable with. Um, my Congress, three. And, or, or Congress and Edinburgh. Congress and Edinburgh because they both have a heel. Yeah, my three were Edinburgh, Congress, and Baltimore. But that's because I have kind of an unnatural distaste for Talon. But I think Talon's a great ship for other people. It's just not good for me. Um, so, like, we're pretty aligned there in thinking. I like the heels on Edinburgh and Congress a lot. And uh, Edinburgh's heel is dope. It's, like, super yeah, good. It's a monster heel. And and to be fair, like, if, I, if I'm if i taking a Russian cruiser, I actually like Chappie better than Talon. And, and, I, and, it's, and its radar runs longer than Talon's. Uh, I like Chappie better than Talon, too. I think people kind of... They put a little bit of stock into the hipper hole on the Talon. Um, I don't 
care about that. I don't know. Me and Talon didn't agree as well as me and Chap- uh, Chapaya. So I'd go Chappie probably over Talon myself. Yeah, Pound, like as far as the cruisers go, I like Chapaya. I like playing Chapaya a lot more than I like playing Talon. Mm-hmm. But you, Ch- Chapaya, like Talon, you can like do the traditional. I'm on the corner of an island with my f- bow tanky stuff, and that isn't what I want to use Chapaya for, right? Right. Like, I want to be mid range is kiting away and lighting fires with Chapayev, not where I would be to use a radar, right? And so yes. that's that's kind of where I'm like, do I want to put that in a in a position where it's gonna be radar? Those positions much better held by Baltimore or by Tallinn or by Congress, um, where you can bow tank a little bit if you have to. Um I can't remember what Wichita's bow is like. You might be able to bow tank a little bit in Wichita as well if you had to. Um, yeah. But but at least as far as radar cruisers go, those are those are kind of the ones I'd probably be leaning towards. But again, I like Cleveland Montpelier as well. Um, uh, mm-hmm. I I like both of those ships. They they have a great DPM. Um, I just wish that that those U.S. cruisers down there had a heel. Yeah, DG says no Baltimore. I bre- I mentioned Baltimore briefly. Um, I'm a fan of Baltimore. I love its AP. Um, and I think it's big, uh, big shells do a good job with the HE salvos, you know, Cleveland out DPMs it certainly out HE DPMs it. I can't remember all the numbers off the top of my head right now. Um, so I think a lot of folks are going to look at that math and go, well, Cleveland's the right choice. And Cleveland's a strong choice. If you're just looking at those two ships for sure. Uh, like you, Scott, though, I, I wish they had a heel. Um, I love Congress. I think it's a great boat. I do worry about 60 second fires, especially in a meta where we're expecting, um, a bunch of HE spam. Um, I think if you're comp, uh, competent in Congress, you can sort of pretend it's a baby battleship um, and use those 305s to very good effect if your enemy team brings a lot of cruisers. If your enemy brings a lot of destroyers, the reload on Congress is somewhat punitive. Uh, let me find mm-hmm. out what it is. Um, 22? In yeah, that range? I think it's 20 Never on serves. mine. I think it's 22 base. Yeah, 22 seconds, right? So if you're trying to stop destroyers from coming and getting you in Congress, it's a it's a bad day. So if you're a, if you're Congress, you want a buddy who can help you with the DPM when you use your radar. And of course, you're in a coordinated game mode, right? So you should be able to get that if uh, you're coordinating with your team uh, pretty well. Casual clans who just kind of fall together and run out there might have a hard time. Um, but uh, uh, if you're if you're getting a little serious about tactics and coming up with plans and things, it's pretty good. Uh, Fishstick says the uh, radar duration is god tier. Are you talking Congress or Baltimore or both there, Fishstick? I agree. The U.S. radar duration is fantastic. And so obviously you're not getting the conversion yourself as often in Congress unless the the target's really low health. But if you've got an ally who can capitalize on that, you can get that radar conversion, I think, frequently. Yeah, Congress's radar is 35 seconds without any Mm -hmm. kind of modifications, right? And so... If you've, if I don't know that you're, I don't know if there's a lot of people running a radar module on Congress, but you could, um, and you could be running a captain skill that boosts your radar duration, right? So you can have that's that's the longest running radar you're going to find at this tier. Um, you know, Baltimore recently took a nerf in that department, right? When they right. they they cut radar durations on Des Moines and Buffalo and Baltimore, I believe, so they could make uh, Annapolis seem cooler. That's at least my take on that change. Agreed. Um, and so Baltimore's <laughs> radar duration is actually shorter than Cleveland's uh, at this point. Uh, you know, it's shorter than Wichita's. It's shorter than Edinburgh. Sort of all those premiums like Montpelier and Edinburgh and Wichita. Those guys all have thirty-second radars. Congress, those has the longest. Um, and so I actually like a configuration if I'm taking three cruisers, where I probably only really focus on bringing one radar. Um, mm. I, and it, and I do think con- like I wouldn't have a problem bringing Congress as my one radar cruiser, um, just because of of what it is and how it's built. I like Congress a lot too for that reason. Its detectability is only twelve point two as well, which means, well, it doesn't mean a ton if you get spotted by like a Cossack or some low detect destroyer. Um, mine does not have a radar module on it from the armory, although for clans I might think about getting one. But with my captain build on there, I've got a 38 and a half second radar, right? So, yeah. and signals and things like that, which which you, there are there is a signal that helps extend that radar range. And again, well. you know, I don't think Congress is an epic cruiser. I just think it offers like the mo- a lot of utility know, downside. Really it only has two heels stock, so you're shorter on heels on that than yes. than a lot of the other tier eight. At least it has heels, but it, um, but you're only going to have like three if you have super intense. 
Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, I, and that's how mine's configured, right, with three. The heal's decent. It's 306 hit points, which isn't the biggest one we've seen, um, but it's it's fine. Uh, um, and, and then again, that's in my configuration, so there may be some stuff uh, affecting that off the math. I'm not looking at ship tool for that. Um, but yeah, I think Congress makes a lot of sense if you're bringing a single radar because it's just such a good one. Um, and, and you know, for for getting stuck in a radar cruiser for clan battles, I wouldn't feel as bummed about being stuck in a Congress, right? And I feel like maybe that's a problem just for our clan where people are like, ah, do I have to play radar cruiser? Why do I have to play Moskva or Petro or whatever it is that we're forcing people to play in tier 10s? Um, Congress to me feels, I, I really enjoy it. I played it in ranked pretty effectively two seasons ago, two sprints ago or something um, and had a really good time with it. Uh, Thomas says, we. I think we'll see Cherbourg. Do you think we will? Uh, it's been very popular in randoms. And then uh, I'll go Ochikov again, says Marigana. It was very popular or very fun last time. Cherbourg doesn't have a lot of armor. I'm, I'm not as familiar with Cherbourg. So I, I'm not going to be able to speak of, to it as, as intelligently. I do have the ship. I've only played maybe two or three battles in it. Scott, do you think Cherbourg is going to come in there? Would you take Cherbourg over Congress? What, why would you? No, they're totally different roles, right? Um, yeah. Cherbourg, I I can, I mean, I played Cherbourg plenty. I think you're A, Cherbourg falls under the category of you're going to see it because somebody's trying to get to breast and they want to lean yeah. on their clans, getting, they want to level the ship, right? Get that so that, again, with eights, you're going to see that on tech tree ships, and especially since that's the newest tech tree cruiser here. Um, you know, Cherbourg has the, what's it have, like the guns off of Dunkirk, like, yeah, they're three thirties, I think. Three thirties, I believe. So its mm -hmm. guns work really well. It has main battery reload booster. Has a speed boost. I forgot about um, the reload booster and this. Yeah, yep. I knew it had yeah, speed boost. It, the downside of Cherbourg is that its base reload is is god awful. It's like thirty on that ship or twenty eight. It's really long. It gets better at breast, and then when you get to Marseille, it's finally good. Yeah. Um, for the size of ship, but mm -hmm. but so you know, Cherbourg is like playing a playing a battleship, but Cherbourg has a thin bow and a thin stern. Um. Now, if you're only fighting eights, that's probably not as bad. And and that's part of the problem I have in talking about armor profiles on these ships because you never get to play at like tier. Uh, so when I think yeah. of matches I've played in Cherbourg, I think about getting punished that's uh, true. through the bow or through the stern, but it's probably was probably by some battleship with 457s or something, right? So um, you don't have to worry about that. Um, I definitely think you'll see Cherbourg for some of those reasons. And I don't think it's a bad pick as one of your cruisers because it has a large HP pool and it has a heal and it has a main battery reload booster and the guns work relatively well. The HE is not bad on it either. If you want to ride HE on it a little bit, you can. Um, uh, doesn't have torpedoes, has hydros, doesn't have uh, doesn't have radar, but um, again, it's got really long reload. It does. Um, Fishstick says uh, Cherbourg will take the place of a JB. You can push a cap with Cherbourg. The only issue, of course, is timing that push correctly. I mean, I agree. I think the reload booster makes things like that work out. I think Cherbourg could be punished if it if it misplays that, if it goes in too early. Um, and I, you know, that's one thing we've talked about a little bit too. Is will people try to replace the lack of battleship two with one of these super heavy cruisers? Um, you, I mean, one could even get put their speculation hat on and go into the speculations under their tinfoil hat on, I guess, and go in there and say, is that partly why we have all these big heavy cruisers? And they're trying out to see if that maybe not, that's not why the ships exist, but maybe they're trying to see if people will do that to see how mm -hmm. popular they'll be. That could be interesting because, I mean, we could take a Congress. You could take a, a Cherbourg I'm trying to think of anything else that feels like a big fatty cruiser at tier eight that would fill Harlem. that role. Harlem, yeah, it's two oh threes, but it's pretty tanky and pretty beefy. It's sixty right? second fires, and it's it's more of a beefy cruiser, right? But it yeah. has the same guns as Oigan, and, and it's HE's no, better. But are they two forties or two, they're two oh threes? They're the two oh threes off of Hipper Oigan. They just yeah. have better HE. The shell char char shell characteristics are not German. Um, I think where I would struggle with having Cherbourg in a lineup, I would I I couldn't have Congress be my radar ship and have Cherbourg. Because where is my DPM coming from then? Right? No, you couldn't do both. I don't think I, I would do, do both. I, I can't have one of I can have one of those cruisers that has god awful reload. I can't have two. Right. Um I just I can't. Agree. I need I need more I need rapid fire reload coming from somewhere when a DD gets spotted and, and those ships just don't give me that. Because you're 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 just not gonna be able like 
you could get a really solid salvo from Sherborg into a DD, and it's not going to one shot it because they just don't let you one shot DDs anymore. <laughs> um, it just isn't a thing. Which like, I mean, you, you, I appreciate, you, but yeah, I understand. Right, well, I like I like playing DD, and you know that's yeah, fine. It's yeah. just, it's just, it, but you're just not going to get that. Like I blew him up with one big blast. You, even if you land like all eight of his HE shells, he's going to soak it somehow. So, right. Um, I, 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 but I do think you'll see Sherborg. Um, I, I like. I like that line split. I will. I, I have that line split. I've played it on stream with you. I will go on record as saying um, I enjoy those ships. I really like Marseille. You're a um, French get, heavy cruiser enjoyer or super heavy cruiser I, I, enjoyer. I, I like Carnot yeah. a lot. I actually like Carnot better than Brest at nine, but mm -hmm. it's a totally different conversation. So Yeah, we can, we can have that one someday. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. We had a comment a while ago who said, uh, I, I don't, and I don't remember who said it. I apologize, but they said, what about a Tago, the oldest premium? And I do have a line on my my ships that I'm interested in that is three ships that we have not talked about. And these are non-censored ships that don't bring smoke, but I think they're useful. One of them is a Tago. One of them is Eugen, which you mentioned a second ago with the Eugen guns. And then the third one is a Malfi. If we're going to have something that runs up a side or that is like a, a low detect healing cruiser, all three, or excuse me, Oigan and Natago bring heals to the game. Uh, Amalfi brings sap and smoke. Um, I think these ships can do some some big hits or some pew pews uh, that are going to work well. Amalfi is really great with its sap uh, salvos. And of course, the oil smoke is going to help get you out of a jam if you get yourself caught out. Prince Eugen, I really like the heal on it. I like the guns on it. Um, I like the hit point pool on it and the acoustics on it, which I think we haven't really talked a lot about acoustics, but I think that's a really powerful sensor because of the duration. And then clan battle ranges are short enough that acoustic ranges can be very um, beneficial. They can co cover a lot of the critical parts of a battlefield. And then Otago with its huge HE salvos and its low detect, uh, you know, Otago is just really reliable despite its age. I think it's a reliable ship. Will you see a ton of Otagos? No. Will you see someone use Otago very well? Absolutely. Um, definitely, I, I think you'll see at least one or two very solid Otago captains out there that are giving you trouble. Um, did you have anything kind of in that sort of a vein, that similar kind of a flavor that you were thinking we should talk about? Or or if you had comments on any of those three ships, what do you think? Well, I, I think it's easy to talk about any Tier 8 cruiser with healing. As Agreed. being yeah. ha, as a, as having an advantage, right? And so I don't think everybody's going to always take a cruiser with healing, but I think there's some cruisers that are going to be brought out because of that. Atago, Atago B, ARP Takao, ARP Maya, all Atago, right? That ship's evergreen, right. and it and and it's fine. I, I remember playing it in Tier Eight clan battles before. Mm -hmm. It's got good hydros. It's got good guns. It's got good HE. The AP is very usable as well. It has a heal. It's got relatively good concealment. It has 10 kilometer torpedoes. Um, it, you know, Otago's a pretty good cruiser. For me, I would play Tone. And, okay. and this is this is when we, if I was looking for that Japanese cruiser fun, because Tone has one more heal. It has better concealment than Otago. It has. Uh, it has uh, it has hydros. They are four kilometer, not five kilometer, right? That's one place where it's a little bit worse. Um, it has the same guns as a Tago, but one turret less. In that weird, all the guns are on the front of the boat configuration. Yeah, they're all kind of stacked up up front, um, which is kind of weird. But it, but it has the same reload. Um, it, it has it has. Um, the same torpedo DPM, even though it has less torpedoes, but they're like the same torpedoes, but it has it launches less of them, but it's the same torpedo DPM as a Tago, so um, that's funky. Um, oh, and yeah, by the way, it launches airplanes. <laughs> uh, it, you can fly airplanes around every once in a while and drop torpedoes. Now they're only tier six planes, um, so so they get they get torn up. But boy, that's a huge spotting advantage. Like I. I, I think we'll see a lot of Tone personally early on. I think you'll see it gimmicky. And it's, but it, like, I, and I've had this conversation with, with our friend um, Elor Gorham on his stream. And, and um, we both like Tone because Tone is, has such low concealment. It yes. has four, it, it comes with four heels, and then you put Superintendent on it. Um, I, I like Tone quite a bit for this. It's on my list of wackadoo cruisers that I want to try. Um, 
I definitely though think you'll see Otago. You mentioned Prince Eugen. Again, we talk about Prince Eugen because Prince Eugen a, it's a pretty tough ship. It has amazing six kilometer hydros. You know, the German cruisers at this tier have six kilometer hydros for the most part, yeah. which is almost as good as radar, and it lasts for two minutes. Um, the guns don't stink. They're not epic rapid fire ratatats, but they're they're perfectly usable good guns with German quarter pin. Um, and it has a heel, uh, you know, Oigan has a heel that Hipper doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think a lot of those, when you look at, you look at some of these weird cruisers, like you played um, Bagration earlier, again, that's another Russian cruiser that not a lot of people have, but it has a heel. Yep. Um, yep. So, so I think those are the kind of things, you know, there are some tier eight cruisers with heels that I don't assume we'll see. I do not think you'll see Tiger 59, even though it has a monster heel. I just don't think, <laughs> I don't think anybody's wacky enough to be like, we're taking Tiger 59 out. Um, I wish Tiger you know, 59 had a, like a cult following, but it just doesn't. Sorry. I'm not, ag I'm not against, you know, I'm not a super huge fan of Albemarle, but um, I think you'll see Ar yeah. Albemarle because of its big heel and it's good HE. Um, I think you'll see Cheshire because it ha also has a monster heel five kilometer hydros and you know cheshire has the even though it only has six guns or the guns off goliath so you've got that you know 234 caliber larger gun um but but yeah you know what was you know you had another one you mentioned as well in your in your list but um well i'll, I'll go back i'll, I'll respond sure. to you you've had a, a wonderful little summary here and you, you responded nicely to the ships i mentioned but i want to talk about tony again um tony not only does it have a really good concealment it has the best cr cruiser concealment at tier eight. So Tone is the most concealed tier eight cruiser uh, that you can pick. Uh, you mentioned the planes, you said they're tier sixes, they get shredded. I, I agree that does happen. Um, I am a pretty bad CV captain, but I can reliably hit stuff with Tone's torpedo bombers. It is mm -hmm. an easy ship. If you are bad at carriers, but like a Tago and think that maybe your clan wants you to get a Tone or you have a Tone and you just don't want to play it or whatever, give it a try. Take it into a couple of co-ops. You can hit stuff with Tone's things. I think they do 2,500 damage a pop or something. It's not very much, but um, yeah, you but drop you like, can... what, 12 of them or eight? It's a lot of torpedoes. I can't remember how yeah. many. I don't know if they've changed it yet, but you could take there's a there's a cruiser captain skill that boosts torpedo damage, and I believe it improves the damage. I believe it it improves the damage on Tone and Issei, or not Issei because it's not a cruiser, but on Tone, I believe right, it actually right. improves the damage on the on the air torpedoes as well. Yeah, just like it does on the main torpedoes, and the and the normal torpedoes on Tone are good as well. And and if memory serves, the angles on them aren't as weird as Otago's because Otago has more of those weird old school uh, Japanese angles, if I remember right. Yeah, I think that might be true. And and again, to talk about just how good that concealment is, Tone's is 8.8 .8 kilometers, right? I mean, you're you're really, really low once you've got a captain on there and a concealment module installed as well. Um, yeah. You talked about, uh, I feel like you, oh, you, you mentioned some stuff about the six kilometer acoustics, which I know we talked about briefly already, but you know, that's only three kilometers less than some radars, but the duration is incredible. And if you can screen torpedoes for your team, even if you're not using them for yourself, if you're peeking around islands, things like that. Uh, Fish Dick said, we have a few Tiger 59 fans, uh, Tiger 59 peeps. I'm glad that they, there is a small fan club for Tiger 59. I think that's great. Um, Thomas said uh, that we'll definitely see Tone. Uh, Big Data seemed to agree. So, you know, I think you're you're bringing up Tone is really, really wise there. Um, and then... Yeah, downside of Tone yeah, is it has the second lowest AP DPM at tier. Yeah, but you're never going to switch from the HE. You're going to burn? Well, you might need to use Well, it. yeah, but it has the fourth worst a HE DPM at the tier. Oh, does it really? Right? It doesn't feel it's, like it. It feels good yeah, for it's Because it only has eight barrels, and the reload yeah. isn't epic, right? It has the exact same reload as a Tago, that 16-second base reload, right? So, um, you know, whereas a Tago... A Tago isn't amazing on HE DPM. A Tago is like... 12th worst you know it's 10th mm -hmm. we're tied for 10th worst or whatever something like that you know when you're when you're talking about you know the best he dpm at the tier you're talking about cleveland you're talking yes. about bayard yes. you're talking about harbin right um, you're talking about the mines which we need to talk about because oh, i yes. know we're going to see that boat yes uh, before um, we get to mines i sure. want to jump back and talk you talked about cruisers with heels and mines i think is also a cruiser with a heel right yes i no. don't have mines Okay. Um, well, you know, D7P, D7 Provincian, um, is a cruiser with a heel. It's got the weird airstrike gimmick. Uh, I think it has, it's got a speed boost as well. Um, mm -hmm. It does not have any torpedoes, and I really wish it did. 
Uh, it's a light cruiser, so small guns. That's that's kind of a thing. And what do you think about D7P? I, I mean, it's going to be sitting there right next to um, the the Harlem in its in your port. Would you choose D7P? Would you choose Harlem? And why would you go for one or the other? Uh, uh, I like you know, and I and I'm the I like playing Golden Lion or Gunlu in in the tier ten clans because I'm a goofball. But that's a different animal than Harlem. I think at eight, I think you if you're if you know how to play, uh, if you know how to do airdrops, you got to remember, you know, the difference there. You know, uh, D seven P gets more airdrops, but they're much smaller. the The drop zone is a is a much smaller drop zone than you get on Harlem in the main line. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're comfortable using those, yeah, if you're good, uh, at them, right. and you're, and I think those are very doable. Even if you take that out of the equation, um, you know, D7P is in, you know, out of all, you know, 40 ish, 39, 40, whatever the number is of tier eight cruisers, mm-hmm. um, you know, D7P's, you know, round 12 in HEDPM, um, it's, uh, you know, it's in the, in, in a similar, uh, what's its APDPM because it's 152 so is not as good. It's like 25. It's kind of bottom half. Um, right. But I think as far it has a great reload, it's like a six second reload, and it's got that speed, that speed boost on it. You can do some interesting stuff. You can do some speed juking, and you can you can do some kiting with it, and you can do some kind of like island shenanigans where you push in and out with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think I think you'll see that ship. I don't as far as dockyard ships go at, at tier eight. Um, do you think? And I'll ask you this: Do you think you'll see that or Anchorage more? Oh, gosh. You know, I, I don't know that either of those ships are particularly popular in just the general community. Um, ooh, boy, that's I think you might see Anchorage more with the smoke and the acoustics. But Anchorage does not bring a heel to the table, I don't believe. Let me confirm. Mm-mm. Nope. Um, yeah, no heel on Anchorage. The uh, the shells on Anchorage are fine, like they're OK, but the reload's pretty long at 15.5. So, you know, the the acoustics but not quite the DPM. And I I would struggle to justify bringing Anchorage when I have other choices. Um, and I think I'd probably be in the same camp for D7P. I think D7P would be more fun for me than Anchorage for the memes. But I, I don't know that either one of those is going to be high on people's lists. As we said before, there's going to be somebody who's going to want to take all of these. Um, before I brought up uh, D7P in Harlem, I did want to go back and mention Reckless Development had a comment in chat that said, I really want Harlem to do well in tier eight clan battles, but I don't think so unless you're really up on its quirks. And I think that's probably true. Like you said, Scotty, you're kind of a, a Howden Lu, Guden Lu, Golden Lion guy who goes out and loves to do the airstrikes when we when we get into meme mode every once in a while. And you know, you do so pretty well, but it's not it's not an everybody ship. And I think that's probably gonna be the case for Harlem as well, uh, Reckless. Yeah. I love using those airstrikes to dislodge radar cruisers in, in competitive. Um, I or, or at least harry them, right? So when, when you, yeah. you know, like if you, like I've had, you know, in tens, right? When there's like a Stalingrad that's like bow tanking and you can just drop those on them over and over again and keep them on fire and do gnarly stuff with them. Um, I, I like that. I think, you know, Harlem, I would rather do that in at this tier with Harlem than D7P personally. Um, but that's just a pers- that's just a personal playstyle preference choice because I like I don't dislike Harlem. I think Harlem's good. It's got low concealment, and um, even though it only has two hundred threes, I've had I've had good games in it in the past. Uh, and it all just depends on your matchups. Yeah, and Harlem's concealment is better than people think. It is a big old chunky cruiser with big, reasonably reliable guns. Nine point eight kilometers, at least in my configuration. I've only got a thirteen point captain on there, although I'm, I do have concealment on that captain. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're sub ten, which is pretty acceptable. Um, you talked about Stalingrads, right? The equivalent for that for this tier is going to be your Cherbourgs, your your Congrai, Congresses, <laughs> Congrai. Um, you know, it's going to be those bigger cruisers that may be more stational, uh, stationary. Bagration is going to be bow in and relatively stationary if you see one of those. I don't know yeah. that we have really like a lot of Stalingrad analogs other than those first two I mentioned, but no, nah, yeah, you can't. I just looking at Sherborg looking at Sherborg statistically we were talking about like mm-hmm. people using Sherborg Sherborg has the worst AP DPM at tier and the worst HE DPM at tier because it's balanced around the main battery reload booster right right and so with that it's just that punitively long reload on it you really you really have to kind of it's just a it's like a fast slippery dunkirk at tier 8 more than than it is a cruiser but um yeah if you're thinking like Cong- congress isn't I, there's nothing like Stalingrad, right? You, we, we, you, not really. Go watch, not really. Go watch. Go watch your recently posted YouTube video about the Russian cruisers. There's nothing. <laughs> like Stalingrad, so. True. True. Um, 
I'll, I want to throw out a couple other ships. One of them was mentioned in chat earlier. I apologize to the viewer. I didn't catch, I don't remember the name who mentioned it. Uh, they talked about Bayard as a kiting cruiser. Uh, I'll, I'll throw out a couple of topics here. So Bayard, and I want to bring up Erian as well, which is kind of an oddball cruise. It's a pan-Asian cruiser with uh, 13 and a half kilometer deep water torpedoes. And then also Belfast 43, which came out to kind of a frosty reception from the community. Um, as everyone said, well, that's not the real Belfast. We want the tier seven one back. But, you know, talking about those three ships, Bayard is a, a light cruiser that can do a little bit of kiting. It's got the French speed boost. It's got acoustics. It's got a reload booster. Um, 152s, we said it's a light cruiser. Seven and a half second base reload. Um, this is going to be a good DD deleter if you can find a way to make it fit into your into your to your um, configuration. Before we jump to those other ships, what do you think about Bayard? Do you think that's a that's a realistic choice? And what maybe what would you um, pair with Bayard to make it successful? It might be an interesting conversation. Light cruisers like that. Um, I don't think I'd want to play Bay. I like I don't dislike Bayard, but I don't think I'd want to play it in this because I feel like it's too squishy. Bayard also has a tendency, like most French cruisers, to lose its rudder. Like that's one yeah. of those ships where, like, if a DD shoots you in the fan tail, you're going to lose your rudder. Like, and it's frustrating. Um, so if I was, I, like, if somebody was like, "Hey, we really want you to play a French cruiser," I don't think I'd grab Bayard before I'd grab <laughs> Martel. I'd, I'd probably take oh, Martel. Martel. I, I like Bayard, but but if I'm if I'm trying to, it depends on what what your what your mission is, and if you're trying to kite and do fires and stuff. Um, Bayard, I enjoy yeah. Bayard a lot in randoms. I don't know how that would translate to competitive. I think um, that's my take on it as well. Um, to just throw out a, a note, your, yeah. your Martel comment's great. Martel has 203s. You and I both are big fans of Charles Martel. I, for mm -hmm. the same reasons as Bayard, I don't know if I'd, if I'd go for it first. Although I love the idea of a, you know, a flanking cruiser like Martel. I, I'm not quite sure if you can afford it in a six-ship game is, is maybe my fear yeah. there. Part of that too is the mechanics of the six v six versus seven v seven, and mm. how you can't really just go. Well, when we did clans last season, we ran a Conde, so now we're going to run Something whatever French you would, like whatever you would yeah, want to yeah. pretend plays the same way. It doesn't have to be French, but whatever you want to pretend yeah. plays the same way. But but since it's six v six, it just feels like that's going to make that different to me. Um, I think if I'm when I'm thinking about something like Bayard, that's again that's. I think Erian is an interesting analog because I would play Erian similarly in regards to wanting to kite away HE shenanigans. Yeah. Because um, Erian has really good gun range. You can play Kutuzov that same way, which is the same ship as Erian, but better because original. Uh, <laughs> original recipe. <laughs> I, original like it. recipe. I, like, I prefer Kutuzov over Erian, even though the torpedoes on Kutuzov don't go as far. Um, yeah. Um, but. But you could, you know, the, uh, you know, those are going to play in a similar fashion. Harbin, the newer Pan Asian tier eight, is really high in HE DPM uh, yeah. and AP DPM, in ostensibly. But that's another really squishy light cruiser. Yeah, I kind of like they are recommending that one myself. If I was gonna, if I was gonna play a light cruiser that wasn't like Cleveland, um, mm -hmm. and technically Mains is a light cruiser. If I, I think if I, if somebody was like, we need you in a light cruiser, my first choice would be Mains or Cleveland. I'd, for me, it would be like Montpelier, not Cleveland, because I have Montpelier and I can run my Pretty Wooster captain. captain. But, yeah. but yeah, so like I would, I would want that. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know if we'll see them, but like I personally really like San Diego and have had good success in it. Um, but I don't know that we'll see uh, a lot of those just because of of how squishy they can be. But San Diego has a heel, um, which is makes it kind of interesting That's to true. me. And it has hydros, and I like the I like the gun DPM on it, and the main battery reload booster with the sap is interesting to me. Like if I if I could use San Diego to be my guy that I want to have, try to delete a destroyer, um, Cleveland, Bayard, Mines, San Diego, those are the kind of ships uh, that I think are going to be good at that kind of job early, just because of the rate of fire. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, I, th I think your take on Erian is good. I don't land a ton of torpedoes with Erian. But you do get some freebies every once in a while that you wouldn't get with Kutuzov. I think um, because of the range. I think Kutuzov could be really strong. Again, you know, Kutuzov's strong in randoms where nobody's trying to help you spot unless you brought somebody in your division. Um, Kutuzov would be really great. With It's got very long range. It's very accurate guns, and it's got reasonably long smoke. You can get a lot of work done with Kutuzov. The challenge with Kutuzov is for newer players. It's not available anymore, so you've got to come up with something else um, if you're going to do that. And... Uh, I had a, we had a comment earlier uh, about um, 
uh, about Bay when we were talking about Bayard, it was from Forrester. Said, "I love Bayard, but in clan battles, if you're not bringing smoke or radar, you need a heal." You know, he's 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 basically saying, "What's that other tool you're bringing?" And and I think you're right. You know, Bayard, Charles Martel, these ships we enjoy, they just don't bring those tools to the to the yard, if you will. And so, mm-hmm. you know. I want to, I'll rewind, and I know it's been like 20 minutes, but I want to rewind your comment about Cheshire and Albemarle. Man, I hate the Albemarle. I, I don't ever want to play that boat again. Somebody's going to be good in it. But I think Cheshire is interesting, even though it's not very popular in terms of like, you don't see them in every battle out there. But there's going to be somebody who's like, well, I really like my Goliath, but now we're at tier eight. I can just buy a tier eight Goliath. OK. And they'll go get one and figure out how to play it, you know, this week or something and be ready to go for clan battles. Um, but Albemarle is so squishy. It, I think it doesn't have a super heal on Albemarle. Is that not correct? Albemarle and Cheshire both do. Yeah, yeah the super heal. It's got acoustics like you mentioned, and the range is good. And the HE Alpha is huge on Albemarle. I had a few games in this boat that I did not enjoy to play in randoms where I was able to position myself well and with coordinated play, I was able to do huge damage. So even though I said, boy, Albemarle sucks, in a coordinated play scenario, maybe you could get something done with it. You know, So that HE, uh, British HE meta isn't on every team that we face. And maybe that's something we'll see at higher tiers more often or higher levels of play than we get to. Um, but uh because the HE is good enough, the, the smoke's good enough, and the heal's good enough. As long as you don't get blapped, and there's only one battleship out there that's going to blap you unless they bring a Congress or, you know, something else yeah. with those larger guns. Cheshire's a weird ship because Cheshire was put up for sale during the launch of the of the British heavy cruiser line back in the day. Um, I think Lendon and Cheshire both were put up for sale during that because they were like analogs of the line, right? They had something that made them fancy. And then Cheshire was taken off sale. Like, you couldn't buy Cheshire for a long time. Yeah. I think you can get it out of boxes. I think it's for sale available again. It's not like, honestly, you're probably better off playing Albemarle because the number of barrels, the the gimmick of having the 234s on Cheshire doesn't make it like that doesn't much better. Pay out, but I, I've had fun games in Cheshire before. Um, my stats in it are kind of, I'm looking at my stats in it. Like, they're not amazing. Like my win rate in it's better than my account win rate. My PR in it's better than my account PR, but my damage in it's pretty mediocre. And that feels about right, just because you're struggling with six <laughs> barrels. Um, yeah, no, you know, I when I look at when I look at what I've done well with, like damage wise, um, you know, it, it, at least in randoms, it's 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 mines and cross of Dorn, it's Montpelier, which is a Cleveland, mm-hmm. right? These are guns with high rate of fire and relative mobility. Um, Kutuzov, because it's overpowered. Irian, I have good stats in Irian. Um, yeah. Anch- Anchorage, uh, I have okay stats in. Belfast 43, I have okay stats in. Stuff like that. The stuff that I'm, the stuff that I have worse stats in is, uh, I actually have like a really high win rate and really poor stats in Tone. Mm. Um, Wichita and Rochester have both just been terrible when I play them. Um, you know, the, some of the ships that are obviously further back in my account age are going to play worse than some of those newer ones just because of my skill level change. But. That, you know, when I'm thinking, like you mentioned Belfast 43 and that three ships you Yeah, I do off, want to right? get to that one and then, and, and then and mines after Bel- that maybe. And Belfast 43 is kind of a funky ship where you're right. Like it got like, people were like, this isn't as good as Belfast. And, <laughs> you know, Belfast 43, when I think about it at this tier, I compare it to Edinburgh, right? Because they're both, they're, Belfast is the same mm. uh, yes. same class of ship, right? And, you know, Belfast 43 has HE and, and instead of just having the AP um belfast 43 unlike belfast tier 7 has torpedoes um and it has radar and no does belfast 43 have radar i think it, it has does radar it has, radar, and, I think it has, it has smoke. i think it has radio hydros and smoke does yes. it i think it has like the full complement it just doesn't everything. have a heel it just Black doesn't have a heel, heel right and and so like um that's you know the downside of it is it doesn't have the heel um but but uh, yeah, you you'll probably p- see people play it. The, the reload on it, I think, kind of sucks. Didn't they buff it at one point though? They might have made reload, the reload a little it better because it was just small buff. Because um, it was just mediocre. It's currently ten seconds. I think it got like a one or a half second buff. It wasn't huge, yeah. and that is the biggest weakness or the biggest issue I have with Belfast Forty Three. I love that it's got all the tools: torpedoes, smoke, acoustics, radar. I mean, this is a this is f- two cruisers for the price of one. But unfortunately, it's exactly one cruiser because you don't get to heal any of it back, right? It's not 1.3. It's not 1.4 cruisers. It's just one. And and the reload, of course, is a little bit less than I'd want. 10 seconds for 152s. And as you, you commented about Edinburgh, um, Edinburgh has a seven and a half second reload. 
right? So its DPM is at least obviously talking yeah. AP only is, is going to exceed that of Cheshire, or excuse yeah. me, yeah. Belfast. And the super heel on Edinburgh is so strong. Even if you're playing Smoke Edin, you have, well, first mm-hmm. off, the smoke is way better because Belfast 43 has Destroyer Smoke. It doesn't have Cruiser Smoke. And, and so that is that. It has that as well. It has I can break contact smoke, smoke, but I, I it has I can break contact smoke, but I can't sit and farm smoke. Right. And so it's got that. Whereas Eden doesn't like and I think Edinburgh between the two is still probably better. But I I don't think Belfast 43 is is the worst tier eight British uh, premium cruiser. Yeah, I, I think someone will be capable with it, but I don't think uh, I don't think it'll be a top pick. Um, I do think we need, we've been dancing around the mines discussion. Partly, I haven't engaged in it because I don't have a mines and I can't speak to its qualities, but I know you do. I think you also have Cross of Dorne, so you can speak to both of those ships, which are the same ship. But, uh, you know, why, yeah. why would somebody want to bring a mines and what's it going to struggle with? What's it going to do well? I mean, what do you think about mines? I mean, mines is uh, mines has been popular since it came out. Uh, it spawned the. It was the first of the of the. Let's make a German cruiser. We'll take the same tech tree hull and we'll put the guns off of Nuremberg on it and see what we can do, right? Um, and it turns out having twelve one hundred and fifty millimeter, uh, you know, German guns uh, that actually have really good range on you know mines' base range is like seventeen and a half kilometers. Um, those guns work and they work really well. They have like a six second base reload. Um, on those little turrets, it doesn't have the same armor profile as Eugen and Hipper. Get that out of the way. The armor's a little bit thinner on mines, mm. um, but it, it still has the torpedoes and and the 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 AP DPM on it tops is the top of the tier, which is funny to think because it's 450s, right? But even though it's HE DPM isn't isn't top of of the tier, it's like top five, but it's really usable. Yeah, perfect gun arcs. The the shell floats just chef's kiss um just a you, you, one yeah of these. <laughs> and you know you know how i love weimer and weimer is the tier seven version of this shenanigan where they were like hey mines was popular let's do it again but we'll take the york and we'll put those guns on it and see what we can do right now yeah. now weimer was really overpowered and then they nerfed the range to rail rain it in but but mine still has that range so again as as keaton is saying in chat tier eight hindi yeah if if as we all know in our clan, Keaton is a, a big Hindenburg fan. <laughs> um, I hope he has mines and he plans on trying to use it because he could use it in the same fashion. I think it would do just fine for us. It's German quarter pen on that HE is good. Mm. You get fires just fine with it, but it just thrashes cruisers and, and BBs. And then if you have to switch to the AP against against uh, broadside cruisers at tier 8, it's going to do just fine. And, yeah. and the reload with that HE makes it tear up DDs. Uh, six kilometer hydros, it's, it's a great ship. And, and for folks who are looking for a Hindenburg replacement, too, I know we talked about Eugen already, or Eugen, depending on how you want to pronounce that. I think Eugen is correct, but people say Eugen. Um, the, that would be another good Hindenburg replacement. If you're a Hindenburg, you know, Stan or a Hindenburg uh, enjoyer, you might be comfortable in Eugen. And the, the whole repair exists on Eugen, which, you know, we don't have on mines. Uh, and so if you're the kind of player who, you know, if you're being honest with yourself and sometimes you need to recover from taking some damage, um, and Eugen might might treat you a little bit better than than mines as a pot, at least. You know, something yeah, we'll have to option. confer with with Marangana later on our pronunciation. Yeah, we uh, need I help. Would, <laughs> I mean, I would say we could pr- we could ask Elor, but like I I I'll go with I'll ask Marangana. Elor will be too, it'll be too much. He'll, be he'll make me feel about it. He'll make me feel bad about how I've been mis- mispronouncing German ships. Uh, I know Marangana won't make me feel bad about it. So, um, yeah, but I I think I I can't imagine that you're not going to see plenty of the mines all the time. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, it's a really strong, it's just such great DPM and it's very usable. Yeah, no, I, I think it'll be popular. I think people know that it has that legendary DPM number or that it's, you know, and, and then of course it, it's got the comfortable arcs. Even as somebody like myself, who I've never bothered to study the ship, uh, but I've heard so much about it. And not just from you, just from random people who've come by the stream or, or comments on my YouTube channel, that kind of stuff. People have talked and said, oh my gosh, I can't believe you don't have a mines. And then, you know, and I, I don't, uh, I need to get one, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but it's very well loved by the players who use it. And I'm sure that it'll be competitive in, in this. Our, you know, in our clan, friend of the show, Burger with a scope has mines, big fan of the ship. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Hey. Burger, <laughs> but, yeah, burger's not. I don't think burger's here tonight. Burger, hey, burger has mines, and he tries to play it, and he always dies in it. He always gets crushed in it because it's not as tanky as he'd like it to be. That's why I bring this up. 
Yeah, we're, but, we're um, sassing him slightly. Burger, we yeah. love you, buddy. Come back, yeah, come but that's, uh, hang out with us sometime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's it's it's a rough ship for him to play. But everybody has a ship like that. Marangana is going to mercifully send us an audio file about the pronunciation of Prince Eugen. Um and uh, the other one that you and I have both received comments on me recently on um, my YouTube channel, and then you in our Discord was the pronunciation of Edinburgh, because we say Edinburgh because we're lazy Americans, but uh, Edinburgh is a little closer, I think. I don't think I'm probably going to get it perfectly. I wouldn't deign to pronounce it correctly, but anyhow. I don't even, I don't know how I've been saying it tonight, but I, I don't really, I haven't been paying attention. I probably won't change the way I say that. I'm from a, I'm from a state that everybody mispronounces uh, in the United States. And so uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce words, uh, uh, but, but uh, you can pounce it. That's, <laughs> Thanks that's for educating that's me it. and I'm good over here. Yeah, yeah that's true. It Once is what they it can is. pronounce I'm your old. state correctly, then that makes sense um all right cool uh we had a let's see was there one more ship i wanted to cover i think we might be wrapping up oh we didn't you briefly mentioned san diego and i said but what if we talked about different ships um i want to talk briefly about san diego you, you mentioned that it has a heel we had a comment in chat that somebody said i think san diego is a game changer um i don't know how many san diegos we'll see i feel like that's more of a chad move i think that's more of a a flex in in clan battles because i think that the the careful and teamwork based application of skill makes San Diego um, hard to stay alive in. So if the enemy team is focusing you, if they understand that you're a threat and they choose to, to delete you, I think they can, unless you're like super mega San Diego boy. So for me, I think San Diego will be played and somebody is gonna shred me with it now that I've stated this, but I think it, by and large, um, the counter to San Diego is a couple of ships coordinating and then bringing it to the bottom. Uh, Scott, what do you think about San Diego? And I don't mean to be like, San Diego sucks, because that's not what I'm trying to say. I just do think that it will be counterable. I haven't bought San Diego, so I can't give my opinions oh, on understood. it, but I, th but I think we'll see it. Yeah, I think it'll be there, especially because it's new and because people are like, ooh, sap, right? But I, I don't know if it's going to be like an every battle wanna, ship. You know uh, what I mean? Brief, briefly, this hasn't come up yet tonight. I, I want to explain why I say weird stuff like that. I think I said something like that about uh, Hawk as well. Oh, you did uh, mention I, that, yeah. I'm in the super test program. Um, so um, I have played everything. And if I don't own it on my account, I can't talk to you about my impressions of it. So, right. Part of the um, NDA agreement that you, or yeah, the NDA. yeah. So I, I have, I have played everything that we've talked about tonight, but I can't always talk about it if I don't currently have it in on my account post release. Um, but I do think we'll see San Diego's because it's new, and it brings something interesting to the table um, mm -hmm. with the with the um, with the main battery reload and the sap and the rate of fire that it has, and it has a heel and it has hydros and it has you know little shorty torpedoes for for corner defense <laughs> as i would say yeah um but i think you'll see san diego's yeah um i think i think you'll see them and i think people will use them well and i think other people will will go back to port well not back to port but down to the bottom pretty quick downriver um, rick makes a comment about me taking my nda seriously i am downriver rick because people like you are also in the uh in the, in the in the program, I believe, and so there, we have a lot of we have a lot of super testers that hang out on the stream, and, and, uh, and Malarkey, who's one of our coordinators, who I haven't seen on here recently, but he hangs out. There's other people in super test, Bereshkov. Um, we have another we have a super tester that joined wrecked our clan recently in a racer. So yeah, I take I take the NDA seriously when I'm on Twitch. That's for damn sure. And uh, and not just because of those reasons, but also because we take uh, agreements that we've made very serious. <laughs> Um, okay, I think I'm kind of wrapping up on cruiser discussion. I, I feel like we talked about everything in my port and some ships that are not. Um, Robinson, uh, Rob Robinson Sniper says how to get in the, C uh, the, the super test program. Um, reach out to us on Discord or something, Rob Robinson. I think somebody can probably get you a link or, yep. or if somebody in, in chat knows and can just whisper Rob Robinson with that information, that'd be great. Um, I yeah, don't have it off I the can... top of my head. I can speak to that briefly um, yeah, on Discord. F find no, just, I would say oh, find yeah, us yeah. on Discord, and I can talk to you about about how that works. But generally, just watch the North. If you're if you're on North America, watch the North America forums for posts about about going mm -hmm. to Super Test Academy. You must attend Super Test Academy and pass Super Test Academy to be eligible then to join Super Test. Mm -hmm. um, and that's universal. That's for every server. It works that way. So if you're an EU player, again, it would be on the EU. 
uh, EU forums. If you're NA, it's on the NA forums, Asia, Asia. Uh, I can't speak to CIS. We're not really involved with uh, that test program anymore. Right, right. So yeah, there's that Super Test Academy is the gateway and you can figure, as Scott mentions, that, that'll get posted about on the forums. Um, and every once in a while, they might mention it in a blog. Or they do that academy like, or they do the academy like quarterly now. It happens yeah. all the time because there's a mandate to increase the size of the North American team by like 100 testers this year. So they're recruiting a lot. Yeah. Uh, but again, if you've got questions about the program, you know, the things that are not covered on NDA, um, I'm not a super tester, but there are a few folks who on the Clyde Place Discord who are, um, and they'd be, you know, happy to answer the, the questions which are not covered by NDA. Um, just there's just real friendly folks. OK. So the one uh, last thing yeah. I would do is what we haven't done is which cruiser won't you see? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a uh, great so question. So I, I like, I look at this list. It's It's got to be Tiger 59, doesn't it? And it has tools. It has radar and smoke. Can and we smoke talk radar. about the, re let me, let me, let me go and I'm going to sell you on Tiger 59 for just a minute because the tools are what does, what does it? Tiger 59 is a light British cruiser that has a super heal that heals, get this, 794 hit points per second. You get three of those. You get smoke that disperses, not normal crappy British destroyer smoke, 106 seconds, at least in my build. You've got a radar that lasts 30 seconds, and you've got a reload that is, what, 3.2 seconds. So you can at least contribute to the, to the conversions with your own radar. You have Turbo AA, which is a waste in this clan battle season. But you've got some tools, man. Like, it is totally not unarmed. The trouble, okay, so Scott, what do you think the trouble is? Why don't you tell the us the trouble? Is the trouble is the god-awful gun DPM, because you have two turrets from the Minotaur, and you only have two, and you only have AP. And so that part of it kind of sucks. Four barrels I, and is the, not and enough And no torps. Barrels. No torps. Yeah. But I, what I will say about... What I, what I think about Tiger 59 at this tier when you're playing like tier, I think... Tiger 59 is like a really good destroyer leader. Like if, yes. if Tiger 59 was like a, a bad concealment destroyer, it would be so awesome. <laughs> like like if, it, if it was like a Ragnar at tier eight, it would be so dope. But um, as a cruiser, it's like a it, to me, it's a bummer. Um, that's the I, that's yeah. the one I don't I don't think I would expect to see. I agree wholeheartedly. Tiger 59 is the only cruiser at tier eight that is still in the game that I have a 100% win rate on. I have never lost a game after four battles. <laughs> and uh, I don't expect to start now. But um, I'm looking at the list as well. Like if there's any any ships yeah. we didn't we didn't really we didn't talk about uh, Rochester or Anchorage a ton. True. Um, we didn't talk about Wichita really. Um, you know, Wichita's got a radar, but like uh, I'd rather play Baltimore than Wichita. Um, uh, Marangana mentioned Ochakov earlier. She said, Ochi I tried Ochakov yeah. last season and it was fun. Ochakov's radar is 10 kilometers in distance and 20 seconds in duration. It's, I don't know if it's the most powerful. I, I don't know if I'd choose it over um, Chapayev. What do you think about Ochakov? Ochakov's weird because it's a small and call with not those guns. What's it have like? It's got eight barrels, right? Eight, um, I can't remember. Is. I can't remember if those guns are used anywhere else. I'm sure they are, but it's Mullins call, so you can like, you can do the whole like I'm gonna T pose and soak over pins shenanigans with Ochakov. Mm -hmm. um, it's got torpedoes and it has that 10 kilometer radar, but it doesn't have smoke. I don't have a problem with Ochakov. I've played it. It's okay. Um, I don't. Heel, I wouldn't want to. Yeah. I wouldn't want to play it in this, um, in this mode. But I mean, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, I, I want Ochakov to be, for me, at least to be more competitive. So, you know, it sounds like Mari had a good time in it. Um, but like, I think I would I would get blapped and deleted and die in it. I have fun in it in randoms. I don't know that my stats are particularly good, so maybe I'm not yeah. the best ambassador for it. But um, but yeah, it's, it's reasonable. It's gun range yeah. is a little bit short. It's 15.6 where I think Chapayevs is up in the 17s. So that's one of the reasons why I kind of lean towards Chappie. Um, but who knows, yeah. you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd play Kudazov or Chappie. Probably. Yeah. I, I think, yeah. and and then I look at the rest of the the tech tree boats that we we didn't necessarily we didn't really talk about. Like somebody mentioned it in chat, like Mogami. Like I love one fifty five Mogami. Mm -hmm. I I think that 
if if I if, if I don't have a problem with somebody who wanted to play 155 Mogami, I probably wouldn't recommend playing 203 Mogami, but you could if it was your thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think we talked about Harbin. I think I mentioned Harbin, and I think your face recoiled in horror. I, um, yeah, I made a face. That re- Harbin, it's not my favorite in I that line. It, I would rather if I was going to play a Pan Asian cruiser, I'd rather play Irian. Um, uh, yeah, but Har- I, yeah. Harbin has Harbin has like you know it can chuck a bunch of those deep water torps. But one thing I was going to um, mention, yeah. we moved off of Harbin earlier after I made my face. <laughs> but uh, you know, we did see we, we did some casting for Clash of the Classes over the weekend. Um, if you guys want to watch those, the VODs are up on Twitch right now. Uh, but one of the things we saw was just some really great play with a group running. Uh, I can't remember if it was the tier six. Um, Pan Asian cruiser alongside a Pensacola Graf's Bay, I think, or something. I think it was Graf's Bay, um, and they they teamed that smoke with a stronger cruiser in it. So, I mean, you might be able to see somebody doing like a Harbin Prince Eugen pairing to do the same thing, or a Harbin Mines, um, and really yeah, tear the way they. Up. What we saw in that one match was a raw mot with an Indianapolis, so he could smoke. Oh, that's in what a it was. Radar. It was Indy. He could smoke, smoke in radar. a radar cruiser. So, what you would do is something like. Harbin smoking in like a Cleveland, right? That would yeah. be really yeah. would be would be really a gnarly smoke screen. That's a lot of HE flying out of it really quick. And yeah. then you can use the Cleveland's radar and hydros to protect the Harbin, the Harbin that doesn't have sensors, right? And so you could do something like that, and that'd be an interesting pairing. Yeah, I mean that's probably a, a bridge too far for our clan. We're just not quite that organized. But like for folks who who play those kinds of meta and strategies. Um, you know, I could see Harbin, that's where that's why Harbin gets purchased and brought into clan battles, right? Like that's why it would happen. So um, anyway, I think that's yeah, any any final thoughts on cruisers? Oh, we did the won't picks, we won't see Tiger 59. Is there anything else we won't see? Just definitely not showing up. I, I would maybe oh. add Harbin to the list, but honestly, somebody might do that, so maybe it would show up, you know. Yeah, I don't know, Ro- like Rochester, just because it doesn't, it has, it just has smoke, and the smoke fire penalty on it's pretty punitive. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's, it's people are fans of everything though, you know. Cheshire, just because it's not super popular, I don't know, but I, I you, you might see some, you know, something for everybody. Eventually, you know, two weeks in, it's gonna be mines and like. You know, it's going to be like these same ones over and over again. And then we'll be like, I don't know, this video was stupid. Why did anybody ever listen to it? So <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. yeah, and I, it, there's my disclaimer again, right? If you're watching this video, hopefully you're doing some of your own thinking because we're like, boy, all the ships are good. You know, we just want to talk attributes and kind of get into it. Black Raptor says, what do you think is one of the best tech tree cruisers? If I'm filtering to tech tree, I'm going to give you a list, Black Raptor, because I don't think I can tell you the the one and the one true cruiser. But I think things like, for me, if I were picking, it'd be like uh, Amalfi, um, Talon, maybe not for me, but Amalfi, Talon, um, Baltimore, Edinburgh, Cleveland, one of those, right? I'm looking at ships with sensors, ship with heels. Um, so for me, those would be my tech tree picks, probably just at a glance, right? Um, I don't know, Scott, if there's, or maybe Chapayev we talked about, right? Now I've given you half the list, Black Raptor. I don't know how helpful that is, but... <laughs> But yeah, for, for tech trees, I, I you know, there we go. Um, yeah, Cleveland, Baltimore, Talon, Edinburgh. Yeah, I, I think those four should be on most people's list and probably would be. Um, yeah, Keaton says maybe Talon would be up there too. Well, okay, let's move on over to Destroyers. Otherwise, we're going to be here all night. It's already 11 o'clock. Um, we're, we're crushing through this uh, in the slowest manner possible. So we're looking at Destroyers, you know, at Tier 8, I think we've got a lot of interesting Destroyers. Again, a pretty healthy list of premiums on this list. Uh, I think I have everything here, um, so hopefully we do. Um, you know, folks playing the home game, certainly get your eyeballs on this list and tell us. You totally you don't have everything here. Oh, you mean do you have everything in the game? No, no, no I thought no, no. you meant no, no, no. in your port. Not in my port. Not in my port. I right. said, I think I have everything on the list is what I meant to say if I didn't say it that way. Um, so, yeah, everything's on the list there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so with destroyers, you know, we're looking at a few destroyers. At Tier 8, we start getting heals and we start getting sensors. And so that's one of the reasons why Tier 8 destroyer play is so interesting to me. Um, and so I think we've got a lot of interesting picks here. There's probably some ships here that some ships here that I think I could safely say we won't see. We'll talk about those towards the end of the discussion. Um, I think I fired off on cruisers probably a little faster than we should have before. But, Scott, any destroyer thoughts in general? And then maybe do you want to start with something that you think is interesting? Um... Tier eight has a lot of fun destroyers that would, you know, it, both sides of the coin, between even, you know, between tech tree and between premium. 
there's there's some clunkers on both lists and there's some there's some great choices on both lists yeah i i agree um if you were if you were destroyer captaining it's our first clan battle of the season we've seen no meta and i and i go hey scott why don't you take a destroyer and you go sure which one are you picking what's your first try probably kid um because of the heal uh it's a good gunboat and the torps are usable even though you only have one rack um, but just because of the heal, I really like Kid. Um, it's powerful, and you can you can take fights and that other DDs can't take because you can heal out of it. Yeah, Kid's really strong, great DPM. You know, you did mention the single rack of torps, but um, they're good torpedoes. They're not the fastest at tier eight, but they've got reasonable range, um, and if you can put them where they need to be, uh, they're going to do reasonable damage as well. Uh, but you'll be able to do a lot of farming and then you know a usdd with a heal you can recover from uh, making a mistake or getting caught that's, out and that's purely my play style because i want to play a dd where i can go get a cap and it has such low concealment and so yeah, like yeah. i can go get a cap and i think i think you're gonna see like akazuki's and stuff like that right and so like that you 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 outspot him right so then you might force him to smoke up you can't you can't hydro him or do anything like you can with some of the other ships we'll talk about but you can you have you have really low concealment, really like on kid. The only stuff on this list that's gonna that's gonna outspot you are the are the Japanese torpedo boats and mm. I think Cossack. I think Cossack's like a five lower. four five six. It's yeah, so low. I think yeah. Cossack's is like five six. So, but so, but you know, I, you know, I know most folks who are gonna play a destroyer. Like you talked earlier about Kievs, and I think Le, Le Terrible and the Fantastic are probably yeah. gonna be more meta. That's just not my personal play style though. That's why I say kid. No, I, I and I think kid works for people who have. Who come from that that more stealthy approach but it, i think kid also works for somebody who knows how to work a kiev or work a fantastic and i say knows I, I should say prefers or enjoys right um because i don't think those are ships that you're not capable of playing or that people aren't capable of playing but you know kid kind of stands in my mind it stands between things like your cossacks and your japanese torpedo boats your kageros etc mm. and your fantasks and your kievs and i I didn't have this boat for a long time. The premiums was out forever, and you were such a fan of it. And I was like, why does he like kids so much? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whatever. And then eventually you explained. You were like, dude, it's got to heal. And I was like, okay, I'll go look at it. Yeah. And I did I had I did a monster. A, I, just, I used to send you score screens from like a ranked yeah. season where I was just having, it was like eight, nine ranked, and I would play the kid and just annihilate other destroyers because I had <laughs> that heal and because you're in a Fletcher at tier you eight. Did. And then I'd get this crazy like base XP numbers because I was killing eight nines with an eight. And, um, <laughs> but like, I, that's why I have a, a special place in my heart for a kid. Yeah. Um, super reliable. Big data comments that uh, Cossack is 5.5 kilometer concealment, and that's exactly right. I was just checking myself, so that is correct. Thank you, Big Data. Um, and we, we should probably jump over and talk about Cossack at some point. But yeah, Kid is so, like, I, I think I told you, uh, you told me to look at it for a video I made a long time ago. I did a video about, you know, powerful ships with other attributes that nobody ever talks about. Um, it's, I think it was kind of an interesting video. And you said, put Kid on that video. And I went and researched it. And before I finished the video, I bought the ship. <laughs> and was like playing it because you were you were totally right about how mm -hmm. capable that shit yeah. is. The other the in this, I don't want to turn this into a just twenty minutes talking about kid. The one thing that kids sure. another thing that kids really good at that does not have any bearing on the season. Kids really good at AA and and yeah. so like that is that factor that a lot of people I know there's a lot of people that think of kid specifically as like an AA destroyer and that doesn't come into play at all this season right. So that's kind of a detriment. Um, you know, if you could trade that AA, because really, what you know, the way the kit is configured and was configured as as represented in the game is they pulled off a torpedo launcher off of a Fletcher and added an AA platform, right? And yeah. so, if you could, if you could have kid with an A hull that had the the torpedo launcher back, um, then it would be, you know, well, then it would just be Fletcher at, at tier eight with a heel, which would be just badass. But uh, <laughs> as it stands, as it stands, it's still one of my favorites. Yeah, no, very strong. I think, um, you know, I, Cossack and I have a difficult relationship. I am bad at the Cossack. I know Cossack is a strong ship, but I think I, I tend to overcommit in it, but I think we should jump to it because it is powerful. It is capable. Um, yep. Cossack has such a low concealment, 5.5 kilometers as we've talked. Um, it does have acoustics as well. It's got those British three kilometer torpedo, three kilometer ship acoustics. Um, in my configuration, which does not include the coal module for it, uh, they still last 198 seconds with signals and captains and things on there. 
there. So that's over three minutes of keeping torpedoes away from you. It's got those uh, line of sight breaking smokes. You get seven of those with my build with uh, Superintendent. Um, it's got a speed boost, of course, and great gun DPM. Um, when you're, you're looking at it, it's, it's an eight gun cruiser and we don't see a ton of those uh, at this tier. A lot of the ships are, are uh, six gun cruisers um, down here at tier eight. Um, what do you, I don't know how much time you've got on Cossack. I feel like it's not a boat I see you play very often, but I know you've fought against Cossacks as well. I do you am, have any thoughts on Cossack? Yeah, Cossack's funny for me because I, I probably would play it well now, but I, it's a premium that I've had longer than I have played Destroyer. Because I yeah. know you know how my port got laid out, so I would end up with like premium destroyers and i was like i don't play destroyer and this was like like a year or two ago now before i started playing destroyers and and so like i just when i would play cossack i never had a good time in it i know what makes cossack good and if i wanted to go play cossack now i'd probably do pretty well in it and not you yeah. know like at my skill level i think i'd do fine in it the one thing i absolutely friggin lutely hate about cossack are the torp angles they're garbage like they're not usable to me um and so right. that's probably why i i have like sense bad feelings about Cossack because I you know me I want to use torpedoes when I'm in a destroyer as well and it's not like they're just like an afterthought of the way the torp angles work I don't like it um as far as though the, I understand though that it's a really it's like the mightiest gunboat uh, it's got such great gun dpm and the concealment sick and the hydros and you can you can hydro push smoke screens and just trash people with it it's really good um and we we'll, we're gonna see it we're gonna see it a lot I think yeah, no, I, I, there's no way you won't see a bunch of Cossacks. And one of the ways that I expect to see it employed is uh, alongside those uh, those less concealed gunboat destroyers, you're going to see a pack of maybe one to three of those gunboat destroyers sailing out here with a Cossack closer to the danger who's just spotting everybody while those guys rain holy hell down on the one battleship that they can spot because it's the only ship they can see or the cruiser that they found that's caught out. You know, so I think we're going to use it, uh, you know, because clan battle play doesn't mean Cossack, Cossack could cork the guns, right? They're not going to be necessarily be out there shooting unless they've got a safe opportunity to do that. Kid, as, as configured in my port, has 1,500 hit points more than Cossack, which isn't a huge amount. They're both just under 20,000. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think you're going to see Cossack used as a spotting platform, a sensor platform, a capping platform, and a gunboat. Pl it, it's just got a lot of great tools. So you're right. I think you're going to see one in, I'm going to guess, 50% of battles, at least on week one. Mm -hmm. uh, Camo yeah, says, five. I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Nope, nope, go right ahead. I was going to say, Camo uh, 1962 says, I prefer the Kagero. The guns hit like a ton of bricks. The downside is the reload, and I love the concealment at 5.4. Um, yeah, Kagero is really strong. It's going to be a great cap contester, you know, especially pairing it with a gunboat destroyer. I think you could do the same thing we were just talking about with Cossack. I think the smoke's longer. Um, the guns hit like a ton of bricks, as you've said. The rotation and reload is not ideal, but um, paired with a friend, Kagero is super powerful. Um, with its guns. Scott, you had a thought a second ago. Five destroyers at tier five, tier eight have heals. Mm. Um, Agnavoy, uh, Uland, Kid, Orkin, and Kiev. Um, yeah, I think you'll see all, I think you'll see all five of those. Um, and maybe, maybe Uland would be the least likely of those five to see, although you may disagree with me on that, but, um, out of those five, I think without CVs and stuff, the 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 Pan Euro destroyer brings the least utility since it doesn't have smoke. Whereas you know Orkin doesn't have smoke, but at least has the radar. Mm. Only two destroyers at tier eight have radar: Orkin and uh, the Pan Asian Shen Yang, right? Yeah. And so I think those are things that would be interesting. But I, I think it's interesting to to note that there are destroyers with heels at this tier. Uh, just five of them. Yeah, and you know, while we're looking at that list, and you, you're suggesting Uland is probably the least least common, least likely. I think it's either going to be Uland or Ognavoy. It'll probably be the the least popular one there. I think we're definitely going to see Kid. We're definitely going to see Orkin. We're definitely going to see Kiev um, or Kiev. Uh, and so, like with Orkin having its radar, we saw a lot of conversation in our Discord and in my stream chat about you know Orkin. Oh, cool! I've got a small end at tier eight, right? 
And I told those at first, I said, you guys are crazy. I don't think so. You know, Smallin's reload is like zero and Orkin's reload starts as its base is like five, right? Um, you can get it down a little lower than that. I said, you guys are nuts. And then one night I took Orkin out and I had three games where I don't, I don't tend to get huge DD damage numbers. Um, I'm just usually focused on the win and things. And so I went out and I had three games where I had like 60,000 damage in the Orkin. One, two, three in a row. And I said, okay, Orkin's pretty good. Never mind. Um, I forgot how good it really is. Its guns are easy to hit with um and stuff like that you do have to be cognizant and afraid of things like cossack things like kagero things like radar which can spot you out and get you in trouble um but i think orkin is going to be you're going to see orkins uh, if only people play in it because they think it's super mega meta um and and fish stick here in chat says 3dd sets uh cossack and orkin is incredible i i think that's a great pairing right uh cossack to smoke up Orkin to radar and both of them to shoot something to death perfect right um, I, you know, I think there's going to be several ways to employ just those three ships we just talked about, Kid, Orc, and Kiev, and, and let's throw Cossack and or Kagero into that mix too as your spotter, and I think you can really have excellent little wolf packs at tier 8, so mm -hmm. uh, interesting stuff. Um, I'll talk about Kiev as well while we're here, Kiev or Kiev, however you prefer. Um, that ship has... Uh, is one of my favorites. Scott knows I'm a big fan, so and of course we know that it was popular last time in Clan Battles at Tier Eight. Um, that ship is one of my favorites. It's got great gun arcs. It's got a very strong heel. Um, its torpedoes got buffed a few years back. Used to have the four kilometer torpedoes. Now it's got eights, so the torps are at least reasonable. Um, it's too uh, spottable for them to be super useful, but you know there are going to be times when you can put those to work. Um, uh, it, it's it's just relative very reliable and it can work at a distance of 14.8 kilometers right so Cossack is 5.5 kilometer spotting or or Kagero 5.4 in their spotting for you you're out at 14 getting things done um and being a distraction and nobody can really hit Kiev at that distance right you can't make connections with that distraction. i mean obviously you can right somebody in in some cruiser some amalfi is going to delete you from in, in your kiev but um it, it's going to do a really good job of doing that rodeo clown roll out there on the outside and if you did two of them or if you did one with a lit terrible which is a ship we should get to as well uh you know you can you can put a lot of fires on things the he chance is pretty good on that ship mm -hmm. and she's fast you know anyway that's my yeah that's do you want to monologue do you want to take a turn you talked about keeve do you want to take a turn then through la terrible la fantastic and talk because that's basically your triumvirate triumvirate of, of the gun boys yeah of gunboat high speed ranged fire spammer clabert style shenanigans at tier eight yeah we should we should talk about those uh the la terrible is uh, you know a lot of people look at la terrible in the um or Le Terrible, uh, in the, uh, what's it called? The premium shop. And they go, why would I buy this? It looks exactly like Fantasque. And it almost is exactly like Fantasque. If you look at the uh, the APD, or let's say HEDPM is 120,000 on Le Terrible, and on Le Fantasque, it's 100,000. The big difference is a slight modification to, I think, the number of guns and the reload. Um, I'd have to look closely. Now they both have... They both have five guns, um, but just so it's just the reload time is slightly improved on the terrible. Um, and you'll find that ship is very capable of the run and gun meta. What it doesn't bring to the table that Kiev does is the heal, right? So the terrible does not have the ability to recover hit points. Um, she's very quick. Uh, the speed, let me find that on here while we're thinking about it. In fact, let me just sort by speed, because I think that's an interesting thing when we're talking about this style of boat. Le Terrible is 43 knots, Le Fantasque is 42.7, and Kiev is 42.5. So they're all within about a half a kilometer of each other, but they're all fantastic. Uh, Terry Lyons says Baby Marceau, uh, definitely Baby Marceau, Baby Clabert, absolutely. So players who are going to be... Um, Players who are going to be into that style of destroyer are going to have a really great time with those three. Um, I love all three of those boats. I have had a great time. I've got a video on my YouTube channel about Le Fantasque. I think the title of the video is the first French DD that doesn't suck. And I know that's actually kind of not true. Uh, there's some good boats down below there. I just really didn't like uh, whatever the tier seven is called. The uh, Vacalin really did not agree with me. <laughs> but uh, 
you know, the six and the five were fine. But yeah, so I mean, that's that's kind of what we've got in in uh, in terms of those boats. I think Scott has stepped away for a second. So I'm well, back. Oh, you, okay, you've vamped, cool. You vamped just the right amount of time for me. I covered it. Well, how about how about I throw it? Well, first of all, do you have any comments on the terrible? Fat no, Max I don't. That's, it was perfect because I wouldn't want to play any of those three in this, <laughs> and I'm, and that's your that's your jam. I'm yeah. I, I I don't enjoy Kiev. I don't enjoy. Um, I'm whatever. Like I just don't want to play. I that is not how I want to play Destroyer in competitive. So I'm glad you did. You you. No, I agree. That's perfect. That's perfect. Well, then I'll throw it to you to talk a little bit about. We had a comment earlier about what about Lo Yang? What about Lo Yang? Mm -hmm. We should talk about Lo Yang. Do you want to cover that one? I don't only talk about Lo Yang, but I want to talk about the cadre of destroyers yeah. at this tier that have hydro acoustic search. That's a great idea. Let's cover it and in so, that fashion. So we talked about Cossack a little bit and, and its hydros, right? But it has these anemic three kilometer hydros. Uh, you know, Lo Yang has five and a half kilometer hydros. Um, Lo Yang is a is a great uh, destroyer. Um, good, con relatively good concealment. It's a it's a Benson. It's a you know a U.S. Benson DD that's that's you know Pan Asian. So you have to you know Pan Asian flag and Pan Asian captain and all that. It's a it's a good gunboat with American style guns. If you're comfortable with those with American style one twenty sevens. Um, Lo Yang has uh, normal torpedoes, if memory serves, as opposed to doesn't have yes. it doesn't have deep water torpedoes. It had, or do they like they're not nine point twos, are they? Are they like um, uh, I think I they might be ten fives or nine twos. Let's oh, yeah, find OK, them. I'll it's been a while since I played Lo Yang, but Lo Yang's got the five and a half kilometer hydros that are sick and, and run for one hundred and ten seconds without any kind of modification. Right. And so so Lo Yang, I. I think is a great choice. Um, it, 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 you know, good smoke, um, you know, the good, long, crazy 124 second dispersion smoke. In fact, it might be some of the longest dispersing, dispersing smoke at tier, you know, kid and Benson have the same. It's that American smoke. Um, but as far as the hydro destroyers go, uh, you've got two choices, uh, you know, three choices with five and a half kilometer hydros and two of them are called low Yang, right? Low Yang and low Yang. Uh, Bravo, and then and then yeah. the third choice is pay is is uh, a ship that I that I used to play, and then Clyde decided recently was like his jam and now <laughs> plays all the time. So I'll never play it again because I just he talks about it too much. But that's the silly wangy. Um, he, again, another hydro destroyer. Um, on the tech side, obviously the Germans like Z twenty three has good hydros at five kilometers and good guns. Um, chat mentioned uh, High School Fleet Harakaze, which is a DD that I really like. Um, High School Fleet Harakaze does not have hydros, but High School Fleet Harakaze 2 does. I don't think that ship is in a lot of people's ports, hmm. um, but I do like that ship. It's a weird amalgamation where it's a Kagero hull with 5.4 kilometer concealment, but it has 5 kilometer German style hydros and, and 150 millimeter German guns. Uh, with Kigero torpedoes, so it's a weird combo. It also has like more like German smoke than Japanese smoke. It's kind of a weird ship. Um, downside of both of the Harakazes is that they have the worst hit point pools at the tier. Um, they both just they're just terrible hit point pools. Uh, you ha uh, even with yeah, I think they're both around like sixteen thousand hit points with with uh, survivability experts. So they're just really low pools of HP. But the conceal the concealment on both those boats is sick. And I'm a big fan of of High School Fleet Harakaze. I think High School Fleet Harakaze too, with its hydros, um, and it, basically, if you just played it, like if you were going to play Kagero, but you you had the first off, you have to have these ships, and they're not for sale, and they haven't been for a right. while. But if you were going to play Kagero, what if instead of me playing Kagero, I played Harakaze too? I played a Kigero. I have the same torpedo load as Kigero. I have the same concealment as Kigero. Mm -hmm. My smoke may not last as long. Oh, and by the way, I have five kilometer hydros that help the team out. To me, that makes a ton of sense. The the loss in hit points kind of sucks, um, but but the value there with those hydros is good. And then and then you know Z thirty five, another German premium. That's a that's more of a weird gunboat DD that has uh, British smokes, uh, five kilometer German hydros. Uh, six kilometer torpedoes it's a weird ship um but again another hydro destroyer and then um and then your your cossacks you have cossack and cossack black and then the uh, the lightning uh the the tier eight british tech line d also has uh also has hydros and i think all of those sensor 
laden um, uh, DDs, all those DDs with hydros, I think you're going to see, because I think that's so powerful, not only for being able to do the old rope a dope where you get another DD to smoke up and then you charge his smoke with your hydros up and kill him, but um, being able to screen torpedoes for your cruisers and BB is super helpful, and being able to do that at longer yeah. ranges is even <clears throat> more value. Yeah, agreed. Um, you didn't mention the lightning. One difference I'll point out between lightning and Cossack is the torpedo range. I struggle in lightning. Of course, I, I struggle in Cossack too, but light, one of the challenges I have with lightning, I'm playing it on my EU account right now, um, is its range is only eight kilometers on those torps. So it's got really low conceal. I think it's like five point is it same as Cossack? It's 5.4, 5.6. It's very low. Um, but I find that uh, the extra two kilometers of torpedo range on the Cossack is really helpful. Um, I had a comment in chat from Camo who said, um, the terrible, one difference between the terrible, he says actually the big difference uh, between the, the terrible and Le Fantasque is the gun arrangement. You have to show more broadside in Le Terrible than Fantasque. And I don't like that. Um, that's true. And that is one of the ways that you've got to pay um, for the. Uh, uh, for that improved dpm so you know if that's something where you're finding you're getting caught out and blapped in the in the le terrible it's it's going to be a, a possibility where you want to consider that fantastic instead uh, and black raptor asks a really critical question uh do you think cunaberti will be viable and i know that you and i were both kind of fans of uh, vittorio cunaberti what do you think about cunaberti in a clan battle scenario i actually think maybe yes um i mean i I like Kuna Birde and I, when I, when I've played it, I, I'm relatively successful in it. Like tier, I think it's fine. Your concealment sucks. Um, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have that. It, it the sap on it's great if you take engagements with other DDs, mm -hmm. but the reload on it's not epic. So like getting in a getting in a knife fight with like a Cossack probably was you're, it's not going to play out well. Um, but. Yeah, I, I think you'll see Colonel Berte, if, if for anything, you're going to see it because of, just like I said, how you're going to see some other ships, because the guy in your clan who wants to play it because he's trying to get to the Adriatico, and he's just looking to use it to farm uh, XP and stuff, right? I think you'll see it for that purpose. Um, yeah. I like that ship. I think, I think there's a lot of mixed opinions on that line. I really like the Italian destroyer line. I've had good success with it. I think there's a lot of people that don't like it. And so, um, I, you know, when I look at the tech line of ships that are here, I think that the ones you'll see, actually, if I had to pick ones that, that you probably see least, it might be Kuna Berte and, uh, Gustav Julio Maricar. Yeah. Wait, wait, did you say those are the ones we're not going to see? I, I would think those would be the ones out of the tech ships that I would see the least, is the least. Berte and, yeah. and, and Gustav Marker. Yeah. yeah, good job America has, I think, the most hit points. It's got lots of hit points. Um, but other than that, I kind of, I don't know, it's fine. I just don't think it's great. If it was the Schultz, or if it was if it felt to me like Schultz, I'd be like much more excited. Um, so yeah, I agree. I don't think we'll see a lot of good job markers, uh, markers. Um, I don't think you'll see a ton of Cunabertes. I think I wouldn't mind playing it, but if I had the choice of Le Terrible, Fantasque, or or Kiev, Kiev, I would probably go with one of those, right? So, for me, it's it would be one of those if I was choosing something like that. Now, Cunaberti doesn't have the gun range that those others do, um, but it it uh, would kind of be similar in that spottable blappable way um or yeah, blappable, yeah, but you, but big gun way you just can't you can't play karen berte like you can those other ones right because you've got to play that mid ground where you're on yeah. the precipice you're on the precipice Leaning of your gun and... range you're you stay in that in that space where you're with the gun range on it is probably what like between eight and nine mm -hmm. so you're staying in that in that range from everything using the guns and then slipping out of gun range to get concealed and then slipping back in to fire a few times and then slipping out you have your smoke shenanigan. Um, people think you can do the whole Paolo runs with those boats. No, nah, that's it's not that. But but you can play it in a way that it's very powerful. I I I you play Regolo that way. You play it. You play all that line that way. I think they're really great. I think the sap on them works really well. And I think people don't use the HE on those boats enough on on your battleships to farm fires. There's no reason not to farm fires with them. Yeah, but get I get the fire started. Switch back to eight, to the sap, yeah. right? But like, get but the fire I also, going. 
I also think that that's a line that, and I don't know, maybe people have been using more of the Italian DDs in ranked. I haven't been playing ranked, but, hmm. but, but I feel like that's a boat that isn't the best knife fighter up close compared to some of these other ships on this list and isn't the best at range of farming compared to some of the other ships on this list and isn't a legitimate torpedo boat like some of the other yeah, boats on this torps list. Yeah, are so slow and yeah. Right? You know. So what what is what <laughs> does it do better than something else on this list, right? I do and it wonder doesn't. Yeah, no, that's that's a that's a sound argument I think there. I wonder, you know, alone I think it's going to be rough, but what about in a pair? You know, like if you put if you paired it with a Kagero or with a uh with a Cossack used your HE and that ship's HE to start fires and then switch to SAP. You could use it for, um, you know, if you were combining it with a radar cruiser. I, you know, I think that kind of double ship meta, you might come up with some new options, but I think by itself, I have a hard time disagreeing with kind of where you're at at the moment. You know, I think that's pretty sound uh, reason. Yeah, you know, if you were going to pair a Kuna Berte, <clears> with <throat> maybe, maybe if you were really going DD hunting and you wanted mm -hmm. to pair it with one of the other DDs that has smoke and hydros, so that you could live in it, smoke, and do a little HE farming if you didn't want to be moving and farming. Um, and you could charge other DD smoke with somebody who could get you vision. Um, because you can you can really mess up other DDs with that sap. Like, mm -hmm. except no substitute. Like, that sap's powerful, and you can, you can melt other DDs with it. Uh, it's really good at that. All of that, all of that line is really good at that. If you, you know, broadsides the DDs, you just tear up with that sap. But... Um, I don't know. I, I just think when, when you're in, it's, it, I think that line is a really good line for randoms where there's, where there's 12 targets. I'm not sure that that line's a really good, a really good line for, for competitive. Yeah. I, I think you're not wrong. I don't think you'll see a ton of them. Cause again, the reviews on it is, is mixed. Um, you know, I did, <laughs> I did fight a Unicum player and a Luca Torigo yesterday in my Kiev and lost, and that's a tear down from Kunaberti. So, I got shredded by that sap. I, ask me how I know that the sap will yeah. work on DDs. Well, that, it's, that's that's a sap, fight, but, and that's a fight that I'd love to be in the Kunaberti versus versus Kiev and versus the Terrible and the and Fantastic because those are big. DDs. Easier. All of those, Sizes. all those gunboat DDs we're talking about are these big like torpedo. They're really like like destroyer leader size DDs, cruiser size DDs. If you ran into a, a Gustav Julio Merker, there's a lot of real estate you can tear up with that sap, right? <laughs> well, um, Merker's you know, slow you, too, so you, you could, can you, you know, can he's easier to you, perform. you can eat up Kigeros and stuff with Cunaberte. Um, the the fight that that you don't <clears throat> that sucks to take, like in something like Cunaberte on this list, is like a straight up fight against like an Akazuki or a kid or something like that. Yeah. Um, you're not going to win that gunfight that way as easily. Um, you know, is it that that's going to be a lot harder to pull off. Yeah. And I think that might be a, a good transition. I do want to eventually come back. And I think you chatted briefly about Z23, Z35. We'll hit those in a second. But, it, you know, that was a nice segue into Akazuki. Um, <clears throat> we saw, we see Camo has a comment in here about a radar Shenyang paired with a Kagero or Benson. Wouldn't be a bad call either. Um, agreed. You know, Benson, a really long smoke. If I had a kid, I would take a kid instead of a Benson. But if I didn't, if I was looking at a tech tree option, I think Benson would work really nicely. That radar, uh, that Shenyang pairing with Kagero would work just as well with uh, Akazuki as well, if you could utilize that radar. Um, and Akazuki's got, uh, I think, the second best hit points in, in the tier across all premium and uh and uh tech tree ships it's right behind gustav julius merker at twenty thousand four hundred, and that's of course before you've buffed it with commander skills and things of that nature so um akazuki is definitely a ship that's going to show up uh its concealment isn't the best but its dpm is pretty legendary its hit points is pretty strong and again paired with somebody else who can help you with spotting or with a sensor ship um i don't think you're going to have a hard time um, slotting an Akazuki into a successful lineup. Um, what do you think about Akazuki? What do you think about a Shenyang pairing with something? Um, where are you at on, on maybe those two ships? I know those, those aren't oh, really yeah. the we, same. I can, but... um, you're going to see Akazuki a lot. Akazuki <laughs> has the best AP DPM at the tier. Akazuki has the best HE DPM at the tier. Um, Akazuki has torpedo. It has the same torpedoes as Kigero. It just can't put out as many, but it also has the torpedo reload booster. Um, you know, Akazuki is a big ship, uh, and it handles kind of poorly. But um, Akazuki, 
you know, we we talk about how like in tier ten cloud clan battles you don't see Hara, Haragumo, but I don't know why you wouldn't see Akazuki in tier eight clan battles. Yeah, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to show up, and it'll show up in force and be a, a a capable ship. I'm there's going to be some point during clan battle season where I go, dude, will you guys get this friggin' Akazuki off my back? Like I'm going to say that out loud, and then yeah. I will die, and I'll be like, that'll ah. be when you're playing Congress and you, you're on fire all the time. Yes, yes, it'll be a bad day. Um, but uh, wrong kind of censorship, Bo, uh, Bowmaster. Thank you for uh, being concerned about that. Leviathan says, I love Kagera with the relo a torp reload booster. Um, otherwise, always did not expect the set. Others always do not expect the second wave of torpedoes after the first wave. Does Kagera have a reload booster? I guess it does. Does that trade it up for smoke? You have to trade the smoke for it. It's yeah. just like uh, Yugumo has that same trick. Yeah, you can yeah. do that on, on Harakaze as well. You can trade the smoke for the torpedo reload booster. But Harakaze 1 or normal Harakaze, um, it doesn't have Kagero torps. It actually has Shiratsu torps. So its torps are a little less potent. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. I, yeah, I think um, I, I think that reload booster concept is likely to get utilized as well. Without airplanes to spot you, it's going to be sensors or another load detect destroyer. And Kagero's really, really it's basically the lowest as far as that's going to be concerned. I mean, is it actually the lowest? 5-4? Does anybody beat that? Yeah, well, Kigero, Harakaze, Harakaze 2, and Asashio. Asashio 2, I think, right? Yeah. Yep, they're all 5 4. Asashio is actually the lowest detect if you consider plane <laughs> detect because it's 0.1 better. Asashio's plane detect is 0.1 better than the other three, but since there's no CVs, yeah. I don't know if that matters. Yeah. But all four of those Japanese DDs are 5.4 concealment when built for it. Mm hmm. Uh, Jackie Diego says Yukikaze that I miss it or not yet. I think we talked about oh, Yukikaze. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yukikaze we, also is 5.4 concealment. Yeah. We didn't talk yeah. about Yukikaze. Uh, Yukikaze. Oh, that's right. We talked about Harakaze. Sorry. More continue. people might have Yukikaze now because we just had another Agile Lane event where they were mm -hmm. selling it again. So Yukikaze is a Kigero uh, with uh, F3s, uh, with the Japanese F3, 8 kilometer high speed heavy hitting torpedoes. So that's its party trick. Um, Yukikaze is great, and I think I think Yukikaze would work if if you're comfortable, you know, with the five four concealment and having an eight kilometer torpedo instead of a ten kilometer torpedo. Yeah, go for it because the torpedoes are fast and they hit like a truck. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, I think you, I think people who have Yukikaze that were going to play Kagero could just as easily play uh, Yukikaze. They could just as easily play Harakaze if they're comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, that sounds like that makes sense. I always tell you that I have a hard time telling those ships apart. So it's good to have you kind of reiterate that to me. Yeah, and we, go, yeah, OK, that clicks right in my head. I sort of I'm like, I don't know how many of those Japanese low concealed torpedo boats you're going to see. But every clan battle season with tens, there's, there's shimmas everywhere. Right. And so, like, if you've got a guy that's used to playing shimma yeah. all the time, he's probably going to be like, well, I'm going to play Kigero or I'm going to play Yukikaze or I'm going to play one of these other ones that's like that. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we'll see those. That's just something to remember, folks. If you, there is a if you're fighting a Yukikaze, it's torps only go eight kilometers, not ten. They're fast and they hit harder. Right. So, yeah. Put a um, sticky note on your yeah. monitor right just now. Just remember how what is that <laughs> thing and how is it different? Uh, yeah. What is a Harakaze and how is it different? Well, a Harakaze also has a 5.4 concealment. It has Shiratsuyu torpedoes instead of Kagero torpedoes. They still go 10. They just hit a little less hard, but they still hit plenty hard. And Harakaze, most likely your Harakaze captain is using Hull B, which gives that Kagero three Akazuki turrets. So that Harakaze can park in smoke and do gunboat things like an Akazuki would. Uh, and then it can skitter away with 5.4 concealment and chuck eight torpedoes like a Kagero would, right? And yeah, then Harakaze yeah. 2, Harakaze 2, similar gimmick, low concealment, uh, but it has German smoke and German hydroacoustics to go along with German 150 millimeter guns. Its guns are pretty anemic. Um, to be honest, you just can't get a good gun DPM out of them. But but the hydros and the Kager, it has Kagero torpedoes and the hydros, which make it pretty powerful. Yeah. And we'll jump. Uh, we'll jump back to our hydro discussion here. Um, I did want to talk about Z23, Z35. I mean, when I think about a destroyer that's just a really reliable all-rounder, um, this is not the most min-max destroyer, but I look at Z23, I think that's a really strong ship um, in terms of capability. Five kilometer ship detection on the acoustics, uh, three five for torpedoes. It still comes with a speed boost. It still comes with smoke. Um, and then of course your damage control party, which everybody has. But uh, um, 
<clears throat> I think uh, Z23 is something that you could choose. I know people like Z46 as well at tier nine and Z23 uh, fits that bill. So if you're looking at a tech tree destroyer, and you're looking for something, hey man, I don't wanna go buy a premium for this. What do I have in my port that looks good that's still gonna be capable? Um, I have no qualms about recommending Z23 to folks. Um, uh, Flood Fox, thanks for the follow. Or Flood Locks, excuse me, thanks for the follow. Uh, what do you think about Z23? And then, you know, is there a reason to take Z35? I don't think you talked about that earlier, but maybe you did. I mean, if you have it and it and you want a hydro destroyer in your composition, and they can put their Z52 captain on it or a better captain on it than they have on Z23, maybe. Yeah, um, the shorter it's torps not, are maybe a, a detriment. Yeah, the short range folks. torps are a detriment, and the and the <clears throat> British smoke. You can you have a lot of smoke screens, but it's break contrast smoke break contact smoke screens. As far yeah. as being a gunboat goes, it's kind of meh. I mean, it is supposed to be more of a gunboat than than not, but yeah, it's okay. Um, it's not a. I don't think it's a premium that a lot of people have. It's um, not. It is uh, out of. Let's see. Hang on. Let me get the, all the ships in here. We, if you include the decoratives, we've got twenty eight ships. Uh, Z thirty five winds up being twelfth in terms of HE DPM. Um, probably a little better. It's second on AP DPM, right behind Akazuki. Uh, the, the reload's like three and a half seconds. So, I mean, the, the DPM's decent if you can find AP opportunities. I think you're right. Not a lot of people have it. I don't think you're likely to see one. And I think the torpedoes will tell people to avoid it, especially when Z23 is right behind it in terms of AP DPM. And I think mm -hmm. pretty similar in HE as well. Actually, mm -hmm. no, Z, Z33 is a little further down. It's uh, 17th instead of 12th for uh, HE DPM. Yeah, yeah, the best thing about Z23 is the, is the hydros. Like, its gun yeah. DPM isn't outstanding, and it's tor the German torpedoes don't hit incredibly hard. They re they reload relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I Again, I, I think Z23 is a fine... Uh, normally dd just for somebody to take like when you're looking at the tech line dds that are available um z23 wouldn't be my first choice but at least it does have good hydros right right and and leviathan here has a chat comment that i think sums it up pretty nicely z23 is a jack of all trades destroyer torps and shell damage is a bit low uh i'm paraphrasing a bit leviathan please don't hold it against me but like kind of hard to dogfight another destroyer i think that's a fair point right and the sensors are trying to make up for that uh the torpedoes are yeah, as Scott mentioned, it's kind of average-ish. Um, nine and a half kilometers, which is nice. The speed is only 66 knots, but you can boost that a little bit, probably get them close to 70, something like that. So uh, it's not terrible, but again, if you're just looking for something in the tech tree that's reasonable to take, um, that might be a reasonable choice if you're trying to be adding to your team's uh, sensor loadout without spending any money in the premium shop. So uh, I'll throw that out for folks. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think we're not going to see? Let's jump to that part of the conversation. You know, as we look at this list, we've talked a little bit about uh, a couple there. I, I think you mentioned Silly Wangy already is kind of a not going to see ship. And I, I think I agree. I like Silly Wangy. Um, I, I love to tell stories about killing Cossacks in it because they don't know that I have acoustics and their DPM doesn't matter if they can't see me. Uh, but um, I don't think we're going to see them in competitive. Uh, what else would you add to that list? Fenyang, maybe? I, uh, Silly Wangy isn't on that <laughs> list as bad because at least it has five and a half kilometers. It does have good hydros. hydros. And it has good deep water torpedoes that hit really hard. No, it's Fenyang. Fenyang's trash. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fenyang slash ship smasha uh, yeah. Yeah, is a yoik yuck. Like, uh, here, let's have, we have an idea. Let's make Akazuki premium. Okay, let's give it to Pan Asia. All right, I'm with you. Still with you. Uh, yeah. But let's not give it the improved HE pen that the Akazuki has. Wait, now what now? Yeah. So I have hundred I have hundred millimeter guns that struggle to pen uh, you know, styrofoam? What are we talking about? Well, yeah, but we're gonna claim that you should use the H E or the the AP on it. Uh -huh, okay. Uh right. I'm supposed to use the AP on it, okay. Uh we're gonna give you deep water torpedoes. Okay. They're really deep. They only hit carriers and battleships. What now? But well, we're gonna give you a reload booster. But hold on. I wait, so you've you've made the guns crap and the yeah. torpedoes can only can't hit much? Yeah. Uh, where where do I sign up? Right here. Right here, Scotta. Buy this premium, you moron. Okay. And then we'll put it out again under the Warhammer banner and you'll buy it again, you big dummy. Yep, I will. Uh, I don't wanna see that ship out there. And I don't think you will. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a, such a bummer. That ship became ne nefarious for a while on the stream. Uh, in fact, you, you know, people used to be able to buy with pizza points, pick Scottish ship. But but recently, uh, Clyde removed buy pick Scottish ship. 
uh, not because of it, but there was a point where I actually banned someone that we know in real life from talking in stream chat <laughs> because he picked Feng Yang for me to play multiple streams in a row. It was like was five really, streams. <laughs> I was freaking angry. He's like, play that, her, her, her. And I was like, I was like, uh, uh, no, I was like, you're, you're <laughs> muted. It was like, a, it was really contentious. Like I was very angry about it. And so you like, were. we didn't take. And and that's why it's gr that that is the equivalent of griefing is we'll play Fen Yang and you know what I played it and I did like 70 80 k because I'm I'm a badass but like that <laughs> that boat should not be in competitive it sucks play anything else please uh, that's I the do, one I don't want to see I do remember before Bogsy took his uh, position with wargaming I do remember him um, being asked by his chat to play Fen Yang constantly and him having a similar no screw you guys reaction so. Uh, sometimes he would do it anyway to be a good sport, but yeah, that that boat should not show up there. Um, I, you know, Silly Wangy, I think is a better. I would rather play Silly Wangy than Fen Yang all day long. Oh, Silly Wangy, best usable. in class torpedo, uh, best in class acoustics. Um, the deep waters are going to be a little tough, I think, uh, to to put to work in some circumstances because I do expect a lot of destroyers this season so i think the deep waters mm -hmm. could be a detriment there um but the acoustics are great the dpm's fine and you just need two more guns you know um i actually think you could pull off yeah camo's agreeing uh, kind of with the story i think you could pull off a silly wangy push um but it would be best paired with another with a friend right and and, and making sure you're collaborating there pretty well the, the five and a half kilometer hydros make it more pretty usable banging. the, the the Russian guns, even though the reload's not great, you only have what two turrets, four um, barrels. They're yeah. more, they're more usable than Fen Yang. Like Silly Wang, he's fine for what it is. Um, the, but I agree with you. I think you're going to see a lot of three destroyer compositions. And so, if your torpedoes can only hit three of the six targets on the map, uh, you're not a torp boat anymore, and then you're not a right. great gunboat. And that's um, that's where I so, think we won't see so, that really. I'd love to yeah. see a world where Silly Wangy makes it into competitive. I just don't think this is going to be it, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Gustav Julius Merker, we talked about that one. It's slow and derpy. It's a really great gun platform, but it's easy to kill. It's big. It's easy to hit. Its torps are mega slow. Like, for me, I couldn't pick it. Somebody will probably play it because, like you say, they're leveling through it. But, you know, I just, I just couldn't take that one myself in good conscience. But... Um, yeah, Ognavoy is probably lower on the list, but the heel will encourage someone yeah, to see, take it. But Ognavoy actually makes my list. Of, I find of that ones really that interesting too. Yeah. Well, Ogn Ognavoy is a gr like if you're really looking for like a great all arounder, even though it has just mm -hmm. trash concealment. Um, but Ognavoy has smoke and a heel. Uh, it has it, it has it. They buffed its torpedoes as well, right? Like it has like. Uh, better torpedoes than it used to have, I believe. Like, or you have selectable torpedo armaments there. Uh, its guns aren't terrible. It's a, it's. I, I like the idea of Ognavoy in this. I wish it had better concealment than it does. Um, but I, I think Ognavoy <clears throat> is playable in this, uh, in this meta. If Ogi had, usable. if it had six guns, I'd be more on board. But it, it is a four-gun destroyer. To for anybody who's not familiar with the ship, um, the reload time is very similar to what you see on. Um, uh, on Silly Wangy, right? It's four barrels, five second reload base. Um, you know, you're trading your acoustics away and you're getting the whole repair. The torpedoes, as as you mentioned, are, are reasonably usable. Uh, so, you know, I, I think you can use Ognavoy. Um, concealment's better than most, right? It's actually 6.1, which isn't the worst. So if I'm trying to sing its praises, right? This is kind of my, my approach on that, which, I, you know, maps, I guess what you were saying, but... I, I don't know that it's a top pick, but I guess if you were leveling it, it isn't it isn't actively trying to tank your team like a Fenyang is. <laughs> like it's yeah, just not that yeah. bad. Um Yeah, we talked about Kunaberti maybe being in, maybe being out. I th I think you'll see them, but not like that you'll when you pop into a match and there's a Kunaberti, you'll be like, weird, they brought a Kunaberti. But it won't be I've never seen a Kunaberti in my life, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah. Uh, Benson's got a pretty good conceal as well. I'm trying to remember what it is. Same as kids. Five point eight. Yeah. Same as Shane Yang. They're all. Those are all like five eights when they're built for it. Those are. It, Benson's fine. Benson would work. It's a little floaty on the shells, but that will let you get over islands. Although honestly, if you're a Benson, you should be out in front of the island spotting for your team in in a clan battle scenario. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, I don't know that you'd be lobbing over islands anyway. But you can do a little farming. I don't think your DPM is top shelf, but it's probably fine. Mm -hmm. Let's find out. 
where Benson is. Yeah, Benson's bottom third, the very top of the bottom third. So it's 19th out of 28 ships there on uh, AP. Oh, I should be looking at HE is probably what you're going to be using. Uh, Benson is sixth, actually. Never mind. Great on the HE. Okay, that makes more sense. I sorted by the right column. So sixth place uh, AP DPM, or HE DPM. That's pretty solid. So, yeah, that's kind of what I think of, of at least what I'm looking at on the list here. So, yeah, um, in terms of ships you won't see, I think we've covered them. Fen Yang, probably won't see Silly Wang, even though I like it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, that, I think, might be the end of our discussion, Scott. Any final thoughts on Destroyers? I'll go back to the maps no, thing. I, Just I let think... this rotate while we're chatting. Yeah, no, I, I think that the the one thing I want to talk about, the, the one other thing I was going to talk about is, I don't know if you thought about this at all, like mm-hmm. wacky new lineups or what you would think is a wacky lineup, but I want to try, oh, you yeah. hinted it earlier, I want to try this weird lineup <clears throat> where you've got Radar Shenyang or and, and or Orkin as as your two DDs, uh, and then you have a, 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 a trio of cruisers, Kutuzov, Anchorage, and Edinburgh, smoke Edinburgh, right? So your cruisers all have hydros and torpedoes and smoke. And then your battleship is Constellation or Borodino. So you have radars in your DDs and in your battleship, but your cruisers all have smoke and crazy smoke, Heidi, farmy stuff. This is a weird lineup that I want to try. I do not think this lineup would be successful, but I, <laughs> I want to I, I want to try this, uh, this weird lineup. No, it can't be Talon because Talon does not have the prerequisites of the smoke and torpedoes. They all have to be that. You, the, the, they have to be, it <laughs> has to be, be Anchorage, Edinburgh, Kutuzov. I think there was one other one that, that would fit the bill. I believe, uh, it, was, uh, would I do believe it. it was, it was uh, Belfast. No, because it needed to have hydros. Like oh, Belfast hydro. 43. I forgot you said hydro. Yep. You could put Belfast 43 in there so that you had a, you had a, one of a, <laughs> one of the cruisers also had radar. But the idea was none of the cruisers had radar. Right. We want to uh, get the away radar from that. Was in the, the radar meta. was in the destroyers and the radar was in the battleship. That, that Your DDs be... were Shenyang and Orkin then, you said? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or it could okay. be two Shenyangs or... Or it could be two, two Orkins, like, I guess, would yeah, work. Yeah, something like that. Uh, so, are there any are there any lineups that you would want to try? Uh, you know, I didn't think about a full lineup, but if I grab my little note card here, you know, if I, I'd probably look at like, I, I kind of want to try a three DD lineup, right? So maybe like a kid, a Kiev, and and something stealthy, a Kagero or a a Cossack, maybe something like that. And then I like the idea of uh, maybe like a Congress and a, uh, a Tago or an Eugen and then taking like a Massachusetts or Lenin for the battleship or something. I feel like we could probably get something put together like that. I'm, I'm just pulling from my notes, even though we talked about a lot of other yeah. ships. Um, I think something like that will be a pretty... And every one of those almost was a premium, right? I just listed Kid. I didn't. Kiev is a tech tree. Um, Orkin, Congress is premium. Lenin is premium. Oigan, Otago are premium. You could do an Amalfi in there, though. I still think that Sap Cruiser is interesting. I don't know if we'll see it really be breakaway. I will comment one more thing, too, is on the official EU Wargaming stream or World Warship stream, I asked Seraphis, I said, hey, Seraphis, what cruiser should you bring? to clan battles in tier eight. And some of you guys might've been on that stream. You might've heard his answer. His answer was, why don't you bring, I, for cruiser? He said, why don't you bring Le Fantasque, Terrible, uh, uh, Kiev? These are the cruisers I would bring. His, yeah. Like yeah. He, he said, and then I when I pressed him for it, well, I didn't press him actually. I think Chegg pressed him, just Chegg pressed him and said, come on, you have to give him an answer. And he said, I think I, the only cruiser I would bring, and this is Seraphis talking, is Radar Edinburgh. So, yeah. I don't know if that's the right answer. And now you got to remember, Seraphis is going to be playing up at Nebula League, right? So for, mm-hmm. for clans like ours, where we're a little more casual, we're going to be hanging out in Storm League and Gold League. Um, we're going to see a different meta at those different stratas of play. And they're all interesting to me. To see what people bring is always interesting to me at all the levels of play. So mm-hmm. we may see a little more variety. Yeah, and you know, when you talk about that Trips Destroyer lineup, I don't think you can do... Like the trips to swear your lineup you described was like one of the fast fire breathers. One Mine was not quite normal. It was too stealthy. One and like one, yeah. kid guy that's kind of an in between guy, and then one Storthy. Tw- I don't think that's what it is. I think it has no, to be at not. least two. It has to be at least two of the fast fire breathers that travel in a pack because 
if you just have one, eventually he's going to get focused down. But if there's two of them, it's a lot harder to they stop them. They have to them. split. They have to choose. Yeah. So so you can do that and then have like a Kagero um, yeah. or like or or something like that that goes out and does torp work and tries to do spotting or um, or like a, a Shane Yang with the torp reload. But you got to remember mm-hmm. tor- Shane Yang's way more powerful than it used to be. Even if you take a radar Yang, you still have torp reload booster on it. So you can just vomit those deep waters. So if yeah, there are cruisers yeah. and battleships, they're going to eat a lot of those torps. So, but I, I think I, if you're doing that fast boy destroyer thing, you've got to take two or three of those. So if, if I were actually trying to build, I think you're right. If I were actually trying to build like the super meta thing, now remember where this is coming from, guys, this is coming from Clyde who plays in storm league. So, if you're a Unicum player and you know better, you can laugh quietly to yourself. But, I, you know, I think it would be like if I were really doing it, like three Kievs and a Cossack or 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 three Literables and a Cossack. But I'd go Kievs for the whole repair and a Cossack. I would do the one Edinburgh with radar, which I can't handle, but I know other people can. Um, and then I would do uh, Vladivostok, I think, for the hit points over Leningrad. I think that's yeah. what I would do. Yeah, I think Vladivostok would be the battleship at that point, too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Elder Artist says, Irian is tier 8. It is. We discussed that in the cruiser section. Um, decent boat, I think. Uh, Kutuzov might out might outperform it for, for some folks, but I think Irian is a, a reasonable choice. If you're good with that HE and you like those long range long range torpedoes, could work. Well, guys, I really uh, I, I thank you for being a part of our, our um, clan battles discussion today. I love doing these. We do one of these every season. So if this is your first time participating in this and you want to come back and be a part of um, It's a Ship Show with us again, we'd love to have you. Um, Scott, I always appreciate your insights and discussion. There's a, it's, it's great to kind of break into the numbers here. Um, as we said, you know, we're neither of us are Unicom players, but we do love getting into the nerdy details of the numbers and everything behind all the ships and having this conversation. Um, Scott, any final words for everyone before before we transition back uh, to port here. No, just um, if you're in a clan, uh, or even if you're not, it's six V six clan battles at tier eight, and it's uh, you can have three mercs. And I think we both agree that um, while while we find it frustrating sometimes, uh, clan battles is one of the more fun things you can do in World of Warships. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's worth checking out and doing it at tier eight even makes it that much more accessible for people, I think. So uh, go out there and get your clan interested. You only need five friends uh, and and maybe you only have a couple and then you can find uh, th- up to three mercs this season. So uh, go try it out. Yeah, that's a that's a great invitation there, uh, Scott. I appreciate that. Um, well, guys, I'm going to I'm going to thank you very much for watching. If you're watching here on YouTube or excuse me, on Twitch, I'm going to go back. I know it's late. I'm going to play like one more game because I said I would. Um, and uh, if you're watching on YouTube later, thank you very much for watching on YouTube. I appreciate you uh, being a part of the YouTube channel experience. If you'd like to hang out with us live and engage with myself and Scott on next time we do ship show, um, come on over to twitch.tv slash live. Give me a follow and leave your notifications on. Your phone will give you a beep or a boop whenever we go live. And we'll talk about uh, whatever we're talking about that week. This week, we're getting back to our regular streaming schedule. We're going to do all of our regular boats and things. Um, Next month, we're going to do a similar discussion like this about uh, all of the ships that are in the Research Bureau. I think between Scott and I, we have most of them. Um, And we're going to talk about all those boats, describe their attributes, and get into the details of what those are like. So if you're thinking about what you're going to spend your research points on, and we just had the two X doublers come back around, um, then you might want to come and be a part of that discussion. I'll announce it a lot, uh, many times ahead of time on Twitch. Um, And... uh, We'll talk about it as we go. I did just drop the link in the description for my video on YouTube about how to do the Research Bureau and how it works and how those uh, currencies interact with one another. And I'd like to encourage you to go watch that if you haven't seen it before and if you think that might be useful for you. With all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching Ship Show. We will catch you guys next time. Again, if you're here on Twitch, we're going to go play one more game. So thanks, everybody. Have a great night and uh, appreciate your participation today.